John and Nick, so lovesick. They can't admit what they feel inside. They love each other, but have too much pride. Just two hoes to find was Jaffa. Are they used to find was Jaffa? John and Nick, so lovesick. They can't admit what they feel inside. They love each other, but have too much pride. Just two hoes to find was Jaffa. Are they used to find was Jaffa?
coded world they find their escape but in their hearts it's a different landscape avatars brave but their truths are veiled hoping their virtual love will be unveiled I've got your back but is that all there can be through the headsets soft laughter we share yet in silence Nick, I love you so, but my wife can't know, you are my favorite type of bro, I'd kiss you tight, and never let go, John, you're the best, better than all the rest, much like Jill Eat, for what a man can get, I'd hug you tight, cause you're alright, I'd make sweet love to you every night. John and Nick, so lovesick, they can't admit what they feel inside. They love each other, but have too much pride. Just two hoes to find was Jaffa. Are they used to find was Jaffa?
Xbox era is about to enter its fifth year. And that's all thanks to you. If you're new here, let me fill you in. Xbox Zero is a platform for the Xbox community with best-in-class forums, a kick-ass Discord server, and of course, XboxZero.com, chock full of the latest news, reviews, and more, all focused on your favorite platform, Xbox. It's every Xbox fan's gateway to the best of Xbox Zero. Our incredible podcasts listened to in over 50 countries across the planet, our own digital store for games and codes, our merch store for the coolest of Xbox threads, and of course, day one, where you can track, rate, and discuss your favorite games on Xbox Game Pass. Xbox Era is built for you, and it's completely funded by you. If you value having a publication truly focused on your preferred place to play, you can support us directly via Patreon. Just head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. You get cool swag and awesome perks, and we get to keep doing what we do. Become a part of the best Xbox community on the internet and help us build the next five years of Xbox era. Thank you for your support. The team at Xbox era haven't been to journalism school and have zero credibility, so they're borrowing some of mine. Xbox era is only made possible by those of you who truly believe. The Xbox Era team would like to thank all our patrons, but especially our executive producers. Assassin Entertainment, Crow at 56, Jordan White, Corkenstein, Kevin S., Law Pell, Not Jack, Top, and Torn Raptor. You guys give us hope. Fear can make you a prisoner. Hope can set you free. You guys are fucking awesome. <laughs> Hello friends and welcome to episode 207 of the Xbox Era podcast. We're here to talk about all the latest in gaming from across the industry, but overall we're focused on your favorite platform, Xbox. If you love what we do, you can support us directly by heading to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era or by becoming a YouTube member right here. And as always, keep your eyes peeled on XboxEra.com for all the latest and greatest in gaming news. I'm Sika Mechanico and as usual, I'm joined by special nick what's going on i don't know how i feel about you mixing these up but it's fine jesse's here too hi jesse what's (laughs) happening friend (laughs) off to a roaring start lads hello chat nice to see you all um please like the stream all of that fun stuff feel free to tip um mikey barrow only (laughs) wants the tip for more rich people yeah yeah yeah, that was a, a not thought out tweet, wasn't it? I understand. I understand the like, thought if I was process. Playing an old indie game. Yeah. yeah, maybe. It was like, oh, this was. I feel like I paid twenty bucks, and this was worth sixty. I wonder what I could do. And it's like, I don't. Know, I mean, you can gift it to a bunch of people if you like three other people if you want, and that'll that'll get them some money. But on the whole, you send a tip we'll to a big old publisher, it it's not going to a dev. Yeah, no, that's right. That's very silly, really. Should have thought it through. Um, but we'll talk about it later. Mm-hmm. Well, There's a discussion yeah. to be had about yeah. that. Mm. Um, before we get into those aforementioned discussions, um, I have to ask: Has everyone had a, a nice weekend thus far? You know, having having a nice not time, bad. good week. Yeah, not bad. Collingwood, imp- Collingwood didn't play this week, so it was a weekend. So off, they haven't lost you could this say. week. No, they Too have soon. not. So I've been, I've been doing more landscaping, which means I'm very sore all over. And as we were talking about off air, I went and saw a comedian, stand up comedian last night. The, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival is on at the moment. Mm. So there's various comedians playing everywhere around Melbourne. So I went last night and saw Jimon. Wasn't bad. Wasn't too bad. But that's a bad Love a good comedy show. Stand up is a. Mm. Is a good is a good thing to go to. Just laughing your head off uh, in front of uh, with a group of people. It's always uh, always a good time. Um, I've been out in the sun all day, which mm-hmm. is why I'm I'm red. You would you wouldn't believe it, Nick. Nick, you'd be in like a sweater and like jeans and maybe some long johns or something. It's twenty degrees. Mm. It was twenty degrees here. Beautiful. That is t-shirt weather here. All right. So it's not like warm, warm, but it's warm enough. So we took the kids to the beach. 
I do uh, t-shirt and jeans in twenty. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I did. I did jeans. I did a t-shirt and jeans today. It wasn't. It wasn't boiling, but it was warm. It was a nice day down in sunny, sunny Essex, and I took the. This is and I took all the kids to the beach and they just kind of played around and we just had fun. But we didn't think about it when we got back and everyone's caught the sun. And I'm like, it's April and I'm red. <laughs> like it will it will die down, really? but like I've actually Su- caught the sunburnt, sun. Sunburnt in twenty degrees. Well, it's, right? it's not like, about the heat, it's about the UV index. I know. Yeah. I it know. was it was really surprising. Um but more importantly, and this is a, a tangent that is necessary because we didn't talk about it before we came on air, and this is very important. I, after I put my kids to bed at around eight, my son was still up until nine, but my daughter was asleep by quarter past, she was wiped. But then I got her up again because I found out something important. As we know, tomorrow, the 28 minute special episode, The Sign of Bluey, comes out mm-hmm. worldwide. Mm-hmm. What I didn't know was they'd snuck an extra episode to season three that's available on Disney Plus right now. Have you seen it? I don't what? want to spoil it for you. I, I for fun, I, did, I, I didn't my know there was new it's episodes. The, uh, it's the red kidding. wedding version of Bluey. It's it's rough. It it, it oh. shocked me. It shocked me. Don't go don't go look up spoilers. It's called Ghost Basket. That's all you need to know. All right. But the end gave huge meaning to tomorrow's episode. So it was a big moment in the Clark household this evening. Anyway, Jesse, how about you? How's your weekend? Uh mostly just working, gaming. Yeah, uh, so a mi- mix coming up. People are going to notice if they ever Google and it pops up that we are getting into the fun listicle biz, the evergreen content side of things where it is not, it's not clickbait, but it is things people Google a lot. Like is X coming to X or when is season X of X coming type of stuff. So just come doing more and more of those, try and get like one or two a day. Because that pays the bills, and uh, it's it's the fun mm. thing when when you're doing this full time, the reviews and the previews and the podcasts and everything they do not pay the bills. They help build up the Patreon audience, which could help pay the bills if it grew about six times bigger than it is. We love our patrons, but we still need ad money from the website, so it doesn't surface and take over the website, but it is there in the background for the Google box to uh, search and find out. So. Lots of stuff goes into there, but Yay. I am still I'm I'm working currently on two reviews with oh. a third one coming in the middle of the week. So still busy with that. Nice. It's interesting you mentioned that. It's t- dude, dude, don't spoil it. This is this is after the show stuff for Bluey. The right? sign. Just, yeah, yeah. Don't like. Yeah, it's free. You know, it's free in Australia. We don't have to pay. For yeah, it's kids the TV subscription or anything. It's just yeah, it's you part can get of it on free to air TV. You can get it on iPlayer for for free. It's BBC, but even then, BBC charge you money for a TV license. Not that you necessarily have to pay it. Um, that's right. In in the UK, we have to pay a TV license. Crazy. Make a lot of TV uh, with it, though. What? <laughs> yeah. A TV yeah. license. A TV license. This mm. is uh, this for any UK people watching. This is an interesting one. Now, some people will tell you that if you didn't pay your TV license, which equates to around one hundred and thirty pound <laughs> a year. Right, and that is under the premise that if you own a TV, and you are watching TV channels on it, primarily the BBC, because it doesn't pay for ITV or Channel Four or anything else, you have to pay this TV license because it publicly funds the BBC to be able to make programs and do news reporting and stuff. Um, now you can argue that in a in 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 a civil matter because it's not breaking the law. If you choose to not pay a TV license and you just say I don't watch TV, gov, they they have to be able to prove that you do. Right, you have to prove that you watch BBC, and if you can say like, no, I don't, you, you can argue it out. So but... you guys don't have technically free to air TV. Uh, yeah, we've you, you, got like Channel Three, Channel Four, and everything, but the TV license has been a staple of British culture for like years, years and years and years. It funds the BBC. So if you watch BBC, are there ads? No, that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Our free away TV is obviously filled with ads. Yeah, yeah, ads and you guys also seem to have way better copyright for using music and a lot of stuff. Like, it, it definitely is a different system in America where music licensing is just a mess. Um, how it all works, you guys just seem to get to play like everything. Yeah, and apparently free to air TV in America is terrible. Like in Australia, free to air TV is actually pretty good. I mean, yeah, it's, it's fine, like we, we, there's like comparatively I don't know, sixty to ninety channels. 
it's all digital now, so there's more. But yeah, I don't yes. think many people bother with it. It's it's funny when I moved into this house, my ex wife now, uh, she was like, "I want TV in the bedroom, I want TV in the lounge." So I was like, "But we t I don't watch TV. Like, if I watch something, it'll be on a on, probably on a streaming surface." And well, I I have all of those. So why do I need it? Why do I need to pay Virgin for a TiVo box? What well, necessarily two of them? Like that they'll charge me a month for, right? And I'm like, I don't want to do this. And I've I've just had to argue with them again because I got rid of one box when she'd left. And then they were like, Oh, well we can't like we can't give you just internet on its own, so you have to have the box. But they reduced the price. Then the contract ran out again. And I spent an hour getting through to them on the phone, because that's what it's like nowadays, to a human being. Mm. And I just got through to the retention department because I mm -hmm. said I was gonna cancel. And I was like, mm -hmm. Look, dude. I'm going to pretend I'm really angry. You're going to pretend that I'm really angry. But can we just skip all the preamble of me saying I'm going to cancel and you going, oh, you know, you know, and how about you just find me a really good deal where I don't have to pay for this TV thing. I just want the broadband. I don't need the phone line that you insisted I had to have three years ago. Just take it all away and just give me the internet. That's all I want. And he was like, oh, I like customers like you. And he did it all and he, he reduced the price by like 60 quid. So winning. Um, but yeah, okay. I, I just tangent because we went off on one there um mm -hmm. on the topic of jesse talking about seo stuff i put a link in the chat to an article that uh lucius augustus shared in the community discord uh if you're not a member and you're watching right now head to discord.gg forward slash xbox era um which is uh about the tiny websites the independent websites like ours against these seo farming buzz feeds of the world right and it is a startling read um, and it really depresses me that that's the state of the internet today. Google has a lot to answer. There's for. one thing mm -hmm. Google has done recently, which is good. Um, they are all against um, websites that are pretty much just AI. You have to prove there's people. If we detect it's mostly AI content, you're not surfaced in searches and you're not making any ad money from us anymore. Like that was a very big thing with them. Microsoft Start. Now you have to declare this mm. is AI generated. Like you have to... The, the companies that are pushing AI are, are pretty good at detecting when you use theirs or others because they're all just scraping each other's data illegally, um, allegedly. Uh, and yeah, so that's the, the one hope is that they'll realize that people don't like fully AI content at all because it is very bad, uh, except for that song I played while we were going live. That was fully AI with some lyrics from me on a prompt. But um, yeah, <laughs> th th they are they're battling back. Who knows how it'll go? Uh, you have to declare if a if there's any AI content in a YouTube video when you upload it now. So yeah, it's wow. uh, it's interesting. Wow! It's wow! The world's changing, gentlemen. We're here to see it. Um, before we get into the news of the week, uh, video games. It's a fun thing that we often dabble in. Apparently. Uh, yeah. Let's start with you, Nick. Have you been playing anything outside of the precious? standard trifecta of video games that you normally play Balatro, um, <laughs> rocket league and fortnite Balatro, rocket league and fortnite no i don't think so I, aside from the game i'm reviewing which i've now finished mm -hmm. i finished the game that i'm reviewing so i need to actually get off my ass and do the review um, i feel i've got to do my harold halibut write-up <laughs> yeah uh, tomorrow but, as, but aside from that um no i have not been playing anything new just just my usuals for this week i am waiting for something to come in soon though there should be there should be a new game coming in no, you're soon. not even doing you're just getting it for free is it a mac mac version are you getting or? no there is no mac version i've been <laughs> i've been busting abu's balls on twitter about doing a Man, mac he, version he he of... takes that in good standing did he yeah no, he's, no. he's having a right laugh with it it's great yeah yeah it's um, good it's lovely to see all of the positive previews um, that yeah, went into uh, heavy detail about the gameplay when we were told not to. We were told the preview is about the preview event, which you, I think you saw from most. But then a lot of people, probably the ones who were flipping out and fanboying and girling in chat during it and making me real confused, uh, were just talking about, yeah, I've been playing the game and it's great. And I'm like, what? we weren't supposed to say that. We were just supposed to say that we were at an event and they talked about the game. <sighs> Yeah. It's always good. Yeah, me. that's frustrating. Because I know, frustrating, right? like Abu and the Tales of Kinsera account were retweeting a lot of that stuff, super because it's positive. So they're happy. They don't give a shit. But I imagine the PR company behind it, 
probably pretty pissed. And that's what people don't seem to realize. Are there repercussions for that, though? They won't are work with you. there repercussions yeah. for that? Yes. Yeah. Th those companies are very strict. If you if they're just basic embargo agreements, if you agree to them, just Stick follow them. them. If you, you can ask us if things are changed or what's going on, can you say the specific thing? We'll let you know. But if you change it or just ignore what we ask you to do, don't expect us to work with you again. And they're yeah they're like, they're doing you a favor by working with you half the time when you're not unless you're enormous okay. prime prime examples right like i remember when uh colt eastwood did his halo infinite campaign review uh he mm. made a boo boo and included the opening cutscene, right which they were like do not include the opening cutscene in big like in the review guide and it's like I think he had to take the whole video down. It had been, it had been yeah, up and generated like 50,000 views or something, and he had to take it down and redo it because shit. that's against the rules. But like with, you're spoiling us, that moment. And for... us in that size, um, we are really wary of it. Kotaku didn't give a shit. They just posted the entire thing and left it up, and they were big enough where I think they just don't care. So, like, yeah, if you are big enough, once you're big enough and you know they're going to come to you no matter what because it's worth the press – they they care yeah, less yeah, but yeah. someone like colt who does care he just didn't see it in the guide so he was like oh yeah. crap let me go redo it without that in there yeah and wow. it's like even even the recent uh the idea xbox preview event right we had four games and mm. the development teams and the and the pr team shared uh, a lovely folder full of resources for me to go and use and, and create the video off of this preview event thanks guys mm. um but uh I think one or two of the games um, didn't have the B-roll of those specific gameplay demos. So Still Wakes the Deep, we saw like eight minutes of really good new footage, but uh, we didn't have it to put it in the, in the video. And same for um, Mezan Studios' Nightscape. Um, and I pinged PR and I was like, hey, am I allowed to just take this from the VOD? Like I've edited it. it you know, you wouldn't know. It looks pretty good. And they were like, no. So I had to email the studios would be like, hey, can I have this? And Mezan Studios were like, oh my God, yeah. And they sent me a direct link and gave me direct copy of the footage. Um, the guys for Still Wakes the Deep were like, ah, we're not sharing that yet, my lads. You'll have to use something from a trailer. Which yeah, is I don't did, think but... they had any, because their cool. one was very plastered, or still in development. Cause, Early progress, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they just, they when they're showing them, they want them to be the ones they fully prettied up to look like they're uh, expecting all, it to at launch. tick in the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've got a few months left on that game before launch. Speaking so. of, it, it still looked great. Speaking of devs being cool, I'm doing a game I can't talk about yet, but they sent me like 10 soundtrack MP3s. I was oh, so lovely. happy. I love it's it when they so do that. nice. <laughs> when you just have the music of the game to put behind yourself, it's like, mwah. Because normally yeah, you have so to easier. go to hope the audio settings let you turn all the sound effects and voice down. Just have the music, get in a fight, running around in a circle for like 10 minutes and then have that music. Yeah. When's that yeah. other game that I want coming? Oh, uh, don't. You're getting. You're, you'll probably be getting two things this month. You'll barely ever. Well, you might play one. I mean, you'll oh, play Tales I'm of Kenzera. One yeah. of them I am. Oh no, then two of them I'm. De I'm playing both games. Yeah. I'm playing this. Uh, I would imagine that sometime this week. I don't know though for sure. I'm just guessing. I, I honestly do not know. Yeah, there's actually going to be games because people are going to yell at me, but I am reviewing Tales of Kenzera on PC. Because Xbox Code's <gasps> not ready yet. Just unless, it, I, unless it's ready, like if it's ready in time, I'll play through, get a bunch of footage, you know exactly how it plays, and that'll be the main thing in the video. But otherwise, it'll be a PC review again because Xbox oh. is very stringent in their um, their code <laughs> their process. What the hell they call it? The mm. friggin' um, Jesus Christ! I can't think of the word. Certification. Certification. Thank you. Yeah, that certification process. People all, are like um, they are being very. Very tough on those lately, because a lot of broken stuff. I'll get Abu to send me a Mac code <laughs> for it. Uh, I'll I'll pause to just say hello hello to all of the community. Um, I have to give a big shout out to um, Randall Thor nineteen, who's in the chat. Yeah. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure and an honor to be the first uh, member of the Xbox Zero team to appear on Xbox Two Plus One with Rand mm. and Jez. Um, well done. I you know it was. Uh, it was last last minute, you know. Probably they asked twelve people before me, but 
It was a really good conversation. Uh, I don't think that episode's available yet until like Tuesday or something this week. But go check it out if you if you want a a good bit of bounce between me, Jez, and and Rand uh, for a couple of hours. It was a really good time. Um, I hope I got a mention. uh, I believe you right at the beginning. They were like. They were like, I bet Nick's, Nick's going to be annoyed that you're on here before me. And I went, oh, I'll, I'll DM him. And I just DM'd you. And you just went, cool. <laughs> so I just like, yeah, maybe it's three gritted teeth. I don't, I don't know. Well, that's, that's similar to you what know, I do that, whenever I'm on that. Game Mess. I make sure to let Nick know. I can't on Game Mess again. You know, that, you know that meme where the guy's like got the smiley mask, but behind the mask, he's like... <laughs> or the guy with the, the veins... The yeah, guy yeah, the veins yeah. in the school classroom. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> you guys are lucky I'm not living in America. I'd be everywhere. I'd yeah, be you'd be everywhere. like a bad penny, always US. turning up. <laughs> I'd be everywhere, mate. Oh, japes. Um, and lastly, Mr. Hipshot in the YouTube member in the channel. Uh, I doubt the panel is reviewing uh, Ayudan Chronicles. I think it is. Yeah, Ayudan Chronicles uh, 100 really Heroes. We're not reviewing it, any of the panel, but I believe it is in the hands of one of the team, right? Chengis has I'm a right? copy of it Chengis. as we speak, and he's uh, he's working on the Probably. review. It's not me. Yeah. That's um, for sure. But yeah, so Jesse, what else have you been playing this week? Sorry, kids are being very loud in the kitchen. I'm yelling at them. Okay. What's up? <laughs> 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 Mm-hmm. I did, man. There've been times where, where like my kids have come in and I've done this. If you ever see me do this, and I'm muted, mm-hmm. I'll be going, "Will you guys?" Oh, it's, it's a big reason I like having this here, so I can just you know go like. Bah, 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 yeah. But um, just, I made dinner an hour ago, got, and they've both just got come down now down for dinner. Pat. It's like I no made, one interrupts. I made it an hour no ago. No one makes noise. And now You've they got well trained, Nick. Mate, I've got my shit on fucking lock. I just got my shit on the control, boys. Single dad life, bro. It's, you know. Just haven't mastered the art. Just, you know. Oh, you know. Um. <laughs> so, Jesse, what have you been playing? I don't know if you can talk yet. I've been playing way this. too much. Mainly um, game that's shown right here, Erebon Shadow Legacy, which was originally Looks coming. So good. It was originally coming to Game Pass and Xbox Game day Pass. one. Um, it is still coming to Xbox eventually as a smaller team. Lost their publishing deal. Raw Fury were the ones who had the Game Pass deal, so not set to come to Game Pass at launch. Um, I liked it. It was. It had some issues. It was going to be around a 7, 7.5. Using the whole scale, I ended up giving a 6.8, but it's like, it's a good game. It's not... Hmm. great it's 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 i i think you'll like it a lot nick because it is very straightforward yeah. exactly what you need to do focus on stealth or so there yeah. there's pretty much two ways you can go and you can mix them up as you f- clear the levels as you progress you can either go uh i'm gonna kill everybody route or i'm gonna i'm gonna be super sneaky ninja lady route uh, i did super sneaky Looks ninja cool. lady which is a little harder but i think gets you a much better ending um yeah i liked it quite a bit it's very pretty for the character models and then some of the environments are really good looking and then some of the environments would be at home on a playstation 2 emulator running 4k like it's it's very hit or miss with the texture quality sometimes but i think overall the art style is really nice plays well enough um i again another one just reviewed it on pc because it's the only thing it's on right now uh, no ETA, but they did say it is still coming to Xbox. They just wanted to get this version out first. So that one was quite good. Uh, I did the Rogue Prince of Persia. Uh, I did that preview, preview. that no one watched. Um, <laughs> I know how you feel. It was the fifth, it was the fifth video of the it. day. And the fifth video of the day doesn't get a, a notification. So, um, but the I do find it odd that we get two... 2D Prince of Persia games in one year. I find that very odd. Yeah, this one, well, like, when they went over it and why this one exists, it's it's a funny timing thing because this one exists because Evil Empire, the support studio for Dead Cells, is the main thing they'd done. We're just talking with Ubisoft, I think, at GDC in 2019 in a back room and said, hey, we'd like to make a, a the Dead Cells type of game, but Prince of Persia. And here we have it. Uh, four and a half years later or something. So 
Uh, it, wow. I got to play it for half an hour over the cloud. It was a very laggy experience because of my internet. Um, it's just natively decently high ping being cellular. But even then, I could tell, yeah, this this is extremely tight, good feeling, varied gameplay. It is going into early access on May 14th because they want to expand the amount of content while also fine-tuning things with community support because uh, it is it is 100% Dead Cells Prince of Persia. Like, they, they're just going for that exact same setup where the reason I'll play it's, this. Uh, it looks cool. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it does look cool. It plays... The, the gameplay is just really good. There was already good variety to the combat. The platforming is incredible because the main thing is holding the left trigger for the wall run. So you either go vertical or horizontal or at an angle to mm. just whenever there's a wall behind you, you use that and that's kind of like your double jump and it just feels perfect. It feels so goddamn good. Um, really, really good. Really fun. Uh, there's also more. I put a review for House Flipper 2. If you remember House Flipper from Game Pass, 2 is... That's the do do the game up and sell it and then make make money. But this one they've actually gamified the game a bit. Yeah, so it's right? it's that's a gist. You'll have quests to just go in and clean up something or redo a room and repaint a room, clean up, or you can choose on your own sandbox mode, just buy a house, fix it up, sell it, or make it your home base for everything. It's just it's like one of those Zen podcast games. Super fun. Really enjoyed it. Um and the the last thing was um, The Division 2, which I just had a... I really wanted to play for some reason because Destiny... I think because Destiny 2 Into the Light was so bad. Um, so I was like, I want to play a good game again that's like that. And so I got... I, I pinged Ubisoft PR and I was like, hey, I got a really good PC and I'd love to stream some Division 2. And so they sent me a couple of Division 2 Ultimate Edition codes because they're super nice which nick is going to be happy about when Ubisoft outlaws comes out super generous yeah they are they are always really cool <laughs> um well I, I like that we've got to the size or, or at least we've we've earned enough uh what's the phrase uh, earned enough earned enough cachet with so many of the big publishers now that because it used to drive us nuts when we were really small you'd get like one thing and good luck you mm -hmm. know and uh you'd see like oh you know these guys over at, i don't know pick a pick a big outlet ign they'd be like yeah we all got 10 copies of game x mm -hmm. and we've all been playing it's just like man it's and it's difficult because we would want to have a, a three-party conversation about game a b c or d oh. and we couldn't and now we're getting to the point where we we can do that a lot more and it's mm -hmm. really nice. So I love it when publishers work with us like that. So yeah. But yeah, the division two looks gorgeous on PC. With it is maxed out. Like I watched your stream. I was just like, it is, it's the, <laughs> it, their engine. Game. Like we know how good it, looking it was from avatar. And it's like, Oh yeah, the division two is really not that far behind. It's just a very different look. Cause it's going for real life. But then I cannot wait to see how that game looks for star Wars outlaws. It is going to look mm. so nice when they are done with it because the Division Pretty. 2 Division two still holds up. Incredible game. It's essentially, if you liked grinding in Diablo 3 or if you just like really good third-person shooters, it's still one of my favorite loot games after they still support it. They're in year six now of support after... Mental. They, wow. They stopped support after three, or three years, maybe four years, and then the game took off when streamers started playing it. It was on sale. And they spun up a team and have been supporting it for the last two years, and it's and added That's a lot awesome. of really good stuff. So yeah, That's the cool. Division Two rules, and that's most. That's it for what I can talk about. Well, I have uh, I, I finished Harold Halibut, and you can look forward to reading and or watching or both uh, my review. Uh, I believe at some point close at to some all, point you don't know I'll yet. Say. Yeah, <laughs> I need to double check on that. Like, I have a vague idea, um, but it's not been specified, so uh, I will annoy them uh, on Monday. Um, I've been playing a lot of Helldivers too because it's it's probably my favourite multiplayer experience of the year thus far. Like, when you've got a good crew, it's it's great. Speaking of which, on uh, on my appearance on the Xbox 2 Plus One podcast with uh, Randall Thor19 and Jez Corden of Windows Central... Um, 
I did suggest that we do like we get Jez in. Rand says he wouldn't play because he's not going to buy Hell Divers too. He's missed the boat, he thinks. Um, but Jez would come and play What's some Hell Divers, so maybe we can invite such Jez thing. on. When it's when it's a games as a service game that potentially lasts years, there's no such thing jump as missing in. the boat. Just I know, jump I need... in. Whoa, Xbox Expansion Pass just joined the YouTube channel. Thanks, Luke. Love you, Luke. Um, welcome. If you haven't, and just as a shout out, if you haven't watched Luke's incredible interviews on Xbox Expansion Pass, you should probably head over to his YouTube channel right now uh, and go and click subscribe because he's really good at what he does. And uh, if I could pay him a wage, I'd have him over here. Um, <laughs> but there you go. Um, what else? What else? Uh, Redfall, obviously, with Jesse. I'm having lots of fun in Redfall. It, it is actually a, a quite fun game, especially in co op. Shock horror. Um, actually having a blast. The art style on it is so good, man. Uh, if you missed it, um, I did stream the first couple of hours of Alien Isolation. I did not have a fun time skedaddle. All right. Um, and those that came to see me scream did get to enjoy that at the end. Although I was you playing it on the... PC or console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing it ultra wide on PC. Um, the visuals are unbelievable. Don't get me wrong, like, it, it, it looks gorgeous still, even now. Like, you can Stunning. see where some of the shadow work is a bit dated, but it's still really, really good. Um, but some of the game design, like, left me wanting uh, quite a bit. Um, it's just pure stalker that knows where you are at all times. Not at the beginning. Um, it was getting to seeing the alien that he was having fun with. Yeah. Through the like, human like, stuff and hiding. It didn't tell you. Like, there's these oh. four humans wandering around and they can shoot you. You've got no guns. And I'm like... What, what do you want me to do? You want me to try and sneak through, but they spot you like yeah. the stealth mechanics are naff. Like there's no guidance. I don't know. It just felt like completely untelegraphed in terms of here, go here, do this. Um, Sounds like I a skill to... issue, man. Yeah, it could be, mate. Um, they're not my kind of game. Um, I've played yeah. it just fine. They're not my kind of game, and I made it through just fine. Got the platinum trophy, the whole lot. I don't like stalker mechanics. Yeah, it's just. Eh. Uh, I'm not having fun with it, Loved but it. I'll do another. I'll do another. Stream we got one. Uh, uh, I'm playing it now. When uh, when you got killed the first time and started losing your shit. <laughs> yeah. the, the sad thing was, my mic cut out the actual scream. Like yeah, the your, game. The Discord filter, filter was uh, the. Because yeah. <laughs> I was, I was like, oh no, ah, ah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, but the the game that's still eating up so much time, so much love, so much energy is uh, a game of the year shoe in at this point, uh, Balatro. Or Balatro. if you want to, if you really want to line people up, Balatro. That's a really Balatro. Another, another weird way to say it. Um, I had this moment yesterday. I'm stuck on orange steak, which is the one before gold, right? It's, it's right. So I'm, I'm running and I'm running it and I'm running it. And I must have mispressed a button. So I'm running it. I've got this run. Uh, I've got, I've got, uh, the checkered deck, so I'm running flushes. I've got everything, everything's coming up golden. And I'm just like, this is it, this is the one. And I, I played like hands and I was getting like three million points. I was like, this is it. And then I completed it and I was just like, I'm a king among men. And then I'd accidentally reverted back to white steak, which is the very beginning difficulty. And I'm still stuck on orange steak and I am annoyed. Blattro, go play it. It's yeah, really good. I had a, um, uh, I had a long breakdown where so i was just for funsies on discord.gg forward slash xbox era sometimes i'll hop in and just shoot the shit and me and my wife were in there and talking with people as i played the division but then i started walking corkenstein through balatro because he's had a hard time he's never beaten it once and i was like ah you're you as someone who enjoys poker are looking at it like poker hands and it's yes, not a poker not game that. it is entirely about leveling up your hand especially super leveling one hand and then getting a bunch of jokers that synergistically up that hand for the most part like that's the main thing i'm having a mix Is that of how you play it it's a mix of additive multipliers and then you want a multiplicative one at the end or two yes the, so you need the additives i had to the multiplicatives to get the super high scores yeah, yeah but i had i had my best run ever the other night and i don't know how it happened but i somehow just was up I, I had upgraded basically every hand type to a minimum of six or seven. Some of them were at 13, a couple were at 10. So it didn't matter what I was doing. I was just getting massive scores. And it mm -hmm. was like, oh, my God. And then all of a sudden, I passed anti-eight. I don't know what anti I was up to. 
And then all of a sudden the boss was big blind, 300,000. And I was like, oh shit. And I fell short. I got to like 150K and that was it. And that was the end of my the run. Ever... I was gutted. Yeah. I was doing so well up until that point. A few antis above that. And it's like 3 million. I'm like, oh fuck. But that's the most yeah. I've ever, like, I've gotten yeah. to the millions, but it's, you need some luck. The most I've scored is 2.5 million in one hand. And it was, how? I don't understand. It was how. a thing of beauty, mate. Like, I think, like, and, and like, like the Bellatro love is so good. Like, I'd, I'd like to just sit and chill and stream some Bellatro because it's, especially for those that, like, are unsure of, of how it really works because you've really got to start, like, when you're playing it, you've got to start actually thinking, like, okay, well, I want my chips to go up first. Then I want to do the malts at the end so it's multiplying the maximum number of chips. Yeah, and then Corkenstein I want to didn't know you can three. move the jokers. That was one yeah, of the Yeah, you've got to move them yes. all around. Um but like but I'm wait what's the point of moving them because, because you want if you it time left it to before right you're... yeah it, so it pings left to right in order so if you've got additive multiplier additive multiplier additive multiplier additive multiplier multiplicative multiplier it's a much bigger number than if it's like multiplying early on the multiplicative one early on so like the times malt instead of the plus malt you want the times malt at the end after everything, like your chips and everything else, I didn't know it went in order. I just thought it just nope. pinged whichever one was relevant to the hand that was playing. It'll start, it'll always do it in a left to right order. So you want the times multiplier all the way to the right. Um, uh, yeah, okay. in general, what he said yeah. there, there, there are weird uh, ones, there are weird things that can change it up, but that's generally the, the rule of thumb is you want to add, add. You want to add first, multiply last. Yeah, I had one okay. where I had the Joker that levels up your hand, mm. and then I had, uh, oops, everything sixes, so oh, it doubled the probability that my hand would always rank up. That's the one you had, Nick. So there's a uh, one out of four chance every time you play a hand that it will level up that hand, yes. permanently level Upgrade it. Upgrade your hand. So that's why all, that that's why all your hands one, were yes. up, yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. So I do um, think I, for, I know what the jokers do. We can we can do it multiple people at a time if we wanted to, but I do think because YouTube's so restrictive with notifications that Discord.gg forward slash Xbox era would be a great place for any of us. You can do it from your Xbox too, Nick, to just stream when we're playing something and people can hop in and hang out. I think, well, I'm gonna start doing that yeah. more. Because it's tough to always do it on yeah, YouTube. It's nice to do it with the patrons. I can't wait I can't wait for Bellatra to come to iOS. I can't wait for it to come to iOS. The, the biggest but... thing for me is like I'm sitting here right now and I could quite happily play Black Throw whilst whilst doing the show. I could quite happily. Dun, 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 dun. But dun, dun, dun. Um, uh, the music. Do you finally no agree with my play. score, Nick? Like, no. Come on, man! It's a ten out of ten game. It's, yep. it's not a ten out of ten. It is. It's a ten out. Of 10 it's game. one of the best ever in that genre. It's not. Yeah. And Since I also Mario pinged Odyssey that Twitter shit. account. Did, I pinged that Twitter account. That game breaks the official Xbox headset. Bellatro. You can't play mm. Bellatro using the official Xbox headset. Weird. I never tried. That's a weird bug. I'll, I'll be playing Rocket League, and then I'll switch over to Bellatro, and all of a sudden I'm here. The whole time I'm playing Bellatro, and then I switch back to another game, audio's fine. Bellatro mm. completely breaks the official Xbox headset, and it drives me insane. You are muted. <laughs> so disappointed. I don't know what you said. You were muted. Now you're just miming. <laughs> Cheer up, Nick. All right. It's Saturday night or Sunday morning. It's the Xbox Zero podcast. We're all here. We've got the wonderful crew all with us. It's all fun times. Um, man, I just really want to play some more. Oh, right is now. it a Dolby issue, Mr. Hipshot? Yeah, I think so. Oh, because I, I have the Dolby that. on. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So maybe I just need to turn the Dolby off. I don't know. But yeah, I Does ran into that. In chat? Oh, I was going to say, John, I ran into that thing with the lack of cross progression really bad because I had it on Xbox and I had it on Steam. Don't have it there. But then even on Steam, before it officially went to 1.0, it didn't do it between the Legion Go and my PC. So I, I have mm. now, I have three separate progressions for Bellatro still drives me crazy yeah see that, that yeah that does drive me nuts but does anyone know just asking the question 
when you do uh, Xbox remote play, so Xbox app on your PC or anything, and you want to remote play, but particularly on PC, whatever monitor it's on, it always goes full screen. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, but I might want to play it in like a little box. Does anyone know how to force the Xbox app into a little box? Instead I've never of tried. Big Alt screen? enter doesn't work. Mm. No, it is. It is. It is. It is just. Well, yeah. Just use Xbox.com forward slash play. Can you do remote play through that? Yeah, but I want to remote stream my Xbox. No, oh, I, was wondering, I was wondering if you could remote play through that. Yeah. F11. F11 is more for browsers. <gasps> it works, Nick. It works. It is, a, br- it all it is a browser. They came from Lucius Augustus. Yeah. I'm thank pretty you. Sure. Thank you, Lucius. Yeah, the version inside the app is essentially just a browser far as i know well then i'm a happy man let the show continue okay jace <laughs> maybe i should play it on my mac oh we will have oh. by far our worst show maybe ever I play... maybe i should play maybe <laughs> yeah, i should play Beletro on my mac <laughs> using my dual sense controller oh <laughs> cop that Boo. xbox losers Boo. what happened we just lost like 70 you... viewers weird I don't know. Maybe they heard us talking about Balatro when they were like, who knows? Uh, Anyway, that's what we've been playing. Because, you know, it's nice to actually talk about the games we've been playing and enjoying as opposed to all of this silly news. But can't wait for the free games I get. Oh, boy. Well, we'll hear from you in a couple of weeks, no doubt. Um, But I think the game I may have leaked. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Biggest news of the week, though. Easily. What? Oh, you're powering up. What's going on? Yeah. He's transforming new, before our very eyes. New flavor too. I've I've finally ran out of fruity flakes, and I had it in the background, but I keep forgetting that we don't have the full widescreen cameras. Mm. So now, <clears throat> I have been drinking apple smacks. Have you ever had apple smacks? Oh, you uh, have. Mm-hmm. I it's know what very good. Smacks. Yeah, it's quite. It is quite nice. It's. They sent me. I don't know the, if I like it. The last thing they sent me had like what? a f- bunch of the small little single serves, and that was in there. It's pretty good. Very. I sweet. still haven't this had is... my care package through yet. By the way. Oh really? Not yet. Nothing. Nothing it should be on the way. Probably stolen I by gave customs because they know how good it is. Yeah. I'll ask him. Yeah, I was about to say all the guys at customs probably kept it for themselves, and are the sitting swans. there drinking it, going, <laughs> "Some losers just waiting for his control." They will yes. teach him. <laughs> you, you, you know, like John may never get his control, but if you guys want some, go to www.drinkcontrol.com forward slash Xbox Zero and use our code Xbox Zero for 10% off. Apple Smacks is quite nice. It's very sweet, but you can really taste the apple in there. It's quite good. I like it. Fruity Flakes is still my favorite, but I like Apple Smacks. It's nice. I think I might like the uh, strawberries and cream I've, one the best. My that is very good. I haven't good. had that yet. I haven't yeah. had that yet. I had the banana split one again oh, today. Go. Very good. Oh, I haven't had that either. Mm-hmm. I banana out. split. I lucked out being. I'm going to tell them to do. I'm going to tell them for Australia to do tiramisu. Fancy. That'd be amazing. Do a creme brulee. You did. That would be a good flavor. Don't worry about yeah. it. I do notice. Like you don't have to. But it's just—it's annoying. I legitimately general. don't. You're saying you do, but you legitimately don't. But he's saying I he do. notices it afterwards. It's just annoys After you so much. I don't care. Half an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can, Trev. You can. You can taste the smacks straight in the face. <laughs> <sighs> can we talk about the news cool. now? Mm-hmm. I guess so. Okay. Uh, the news, the news. Uh, Fallout is probably the biggest story of the week, I think, and it's yeah. uh, broadly successful. For those that haven't watched it all yet, I've only seen the first three episodes. Jesse has seen it all, and you can read his review. Twice. Uh, there's a spoiler I've light review. I've seen the first episode. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk lightly about how we feel about it without any spoilers. Yeah? Sex scene. Right up front. I was like, oh, here we go. I'm on board for this show. It is a very you want, you want to hear some, you want to hear happily a funny story. an R-rated show. You know how at the start, the show starts and you see in the top left corner the rating and why it's got the rating it has. Yep. Season so, of on. course, this show was like rated 
I don't know, M-A-R, whatever it was, and it says drug use and this and that. And then at the end, it said sex scenes. And my wife goes, oh, look, sex scenes. You'll be interested. <laughs> You'll be paying attention. <laughs> Nick could not wow. wait to see that guy's butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, I-, I was watching it from the perspective of someone who's never played one of the games. Um, I thought the show was pretty good. The first episode, I didn't mind it, mm. and it gets better. I like the premise. Better. It it is a a nice upwards ramp as things start coming together plot wise, and it's got Matt Berry. That, that very which... first scene was full on, with mm. Walter Goggins and his daughter. Mm-hmm. That was um, brilliantly done. Yes, that was full on. My my first thought was, did you, did anyone else think quick jump in the pool? Yes, I did <laughs> like as well. I, did. I thought that's exactly what they were going to do. <laughs> I was like, jump in the pool. Just jump in the pool. But they did not. If you're when you're that close, it doesn't matter. But um I don't think most people realize a Fall Out Boy thumbs up isn't hey, thumbs up, okay. It is the thumb the... for mushroom clouds. That was always what it was, because he's one eyeing it. Oh uh, really? I didn't yeah. know yeah. that. It's effectively if if your thumb covers the cloud, yes. you're probably okay. No, if your thumb yes. covers the cloud, run. If your thumb doesn't no, no, cover no. the cloud, you're done. Yeah. Then you, there's yeah. no point running. Yeah, there's no point running. You're dead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So if the thumb covers the cloud, you've got a chance to run and escape. But if your thumb doesn't cover the cloud, you are fucked. Yeah. yeah. But we're just talking Don't broad Fallout overall points because I am a huge fan of the series. One of my yeah. favorites. Um, I will be doing a stream of Fallout 4 on the 25th because that's when the new patch hits, which will... I mean, we can talk about soon too, but... um. I, I got caught up in the hype and I bought Fallout 4. It was on sale for $13. I'll well, never play it, but I just bought it because I got caught up in the hype. Did you buy the Game it's of the Year Game edition? Pass. Yes, Game of the Year yeah, edition. That's the only time it's worth it because you, you get the what otherwise would be like $45, 50 bucks for you, expansion pass included. So Yes, correct. Um, Fallout 76 is free on Amazon yep. Twitch Prime. Yeah, for Xbox so and PC that. Microsoft Store. PC. So. But, you know, I went to redeem the PC code. It says you already own this because I had redeemed the Xbox one. No, so it's because they the gave it away twice. a while ago. I had oh, the same they? thing. Oh, they, like, they gave why. the PC version away th- as a Game Pass perk, I think. If well, memory serves, I might be wrong. For, I might have a spare code for Fallout 76 on PC. There's then. a few million spare codes for that game out there right now. So you don't oh, have okay. Amazon Prime. And I also, I, I also bought Fallout New Vegas on 360. I just got caught up in everyone getting excited about wow. Fallout, and I happened to just check chuck the store. Money around. Well, for, it was three dollars for Fallout New Vegas, three Australian dollars. So I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll just I'll buy it to own it. Why not?" Um, but yeah, good show. The show, without show, it's being good. spoilery for people who have played Fallout One and Two, like the locations in this show. Are, are much more located in that because it's it's around LA, which is where those games were around. So it, it calls back. Than it, Halo. It, it feels like see, every, not everything has to be comparative. That's what that's the shitty conversation, the lazy engagement. Screw that. We can just talk about Fallout without getting into the A versus B stuff you so much enjoy, Nicholas. But yes, it is by far the most faithful video game to me, live media adaption I've ever seen. Like, they were just yeah. all about it. And Last of Us was very faithful in a lot of ways, but then did change up some very major things so that they didn't have to wear masks all the time. Um, this one is, is just Fallout. Is Lucy in the game? No. None of these characters, the main characters, are okay. from the games because this takes place later than any of the games ever has. It's like oh, roughly, really? it's roughly a decade after Fallout 4, which had been the previous latest. Fallout 76, funnily enough, the earliest. Okay. It's, it's interesting as well because a lot of people are like, oh, is it going to spoil the game? And it's like the whole premise of every Fallout, to my knowledge, is is that you're starting in a new vault, in a new story, with a new character, and it's a new mystery or whatever. Some of them weren't be. even about vaults. Right. I don't think you were a vault dweller in it, 2. You were just uh, the car- yeah. and like I don't know that you were a vault dweller in New Vegas. I can't remember. You're called the Courier. But I, read a, I read an interview with Todd Howard, and he commented on, and, and, and again, I'm being spoiler-free, he commented on how the show gets to do something at the very start that the games have never been able to do, really. Um, oh. 
to a great degree. And then how that continues throughout the show, how they've been able to flesh out the world in a very different way because of the medium of television. Um, but yeah, I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with, uh, how it's shot. I'm impressed with the mixture of comedy and seriousness, which fallout uh, and Bethesda writing in general is always kind of really nicely balanced. Um, but you know, and as much as I know Jesse doesn't want to do the whole comparative conversational piece Let's between Halo and Fallout was uh, always Fallout. known for having a good story and great writing. The Halo games were never known for either of those things, so it makes more sense to be faithful to the be building but, the world of Fallout up instead of they starting still something made a new. Good Halo show, man. Yeah, they did. Season I, season one, okay. It, season two, I'll put great. it in a different. I'll put it in a different context. It's not. Like there's clearly there's differences in budget, there's differences in scope, there's differences in in style, but I think it the biggest I think face plant that the Halo TV show has done is is ignore is it's taken all the flavors of things that people love from the games. The reason it's getting this is getting so much wider praise is because they've made a video game TV show on a video game and they've honored the video game through Correct. every step of the way. And that has just made all of those fans go, yeah. No, we love it. No, yeah. no. Fallout yeah. fans fucking hate this show. The devout Fallout mm. fans hate it because it hurts. There's okay. There's no way to really talk about it, but it goes against some of the uh, continuity of the original games and Fallout New Vegas, and they have been furious about it. No, the people like it. The general audience likes it because it's a good show with good writing. Doesn't, they don't give two shits about but it doesn't, it I've doesn't only seen throw away. I've only seen positivity on Twitter about it and on yeah. Halo I saw no I, positivity I promise. about Halo. Okay. I've pro I promise you the devout Fallout communities, especially on Reddit and other places, are are all up in arms and furious because the timeline might not always match. And oh, they tried to make New Vegas not canon in various ways, and like an Emil's, see that. Emil's I did come see out the and New said, Vegas no, it's fully canon. Retconning or some shit. Yeah, there wasn't any. It's um there, there's something that happens there's there's dates and timelines shown and it's like it's not it's not set in stone they're more like just don't worry about it it's fine but the the main thing like the show is being loved because it's a good show the vast general audience watching it have no idea what Fallout is they're gonna go find out now because a lot of people are buying it and playing it that do have access to games but good show is good show. So you what you're saying it? is that Halo is the double whammy of not following the games and also being a bad show. Halo didn't have the same level of story to pull from. It just did not. Outright. Halo could have been a slam dunk. In like a dumb hopefully Michael Bay way season or three, off aliens. Like, I mean... Hopefully season three is that finally we get to that moment where it's decent. We'll and see. enjoyable. The Halo, um, you, got, the Halo universe has just always been so much. It's not its own thing, nearly like Fallout is. It's not a series known for its writing. The books had some cool things, but even then, most of the time, it was just like sci-fi tropes given a cool Halo flavor, and the games are super fun to play, and we all like them. If you just take the story of the Halo games, I don't think it translates into a particularly exciting TV show. I disagree. Be, it would I just be 95% fighting, and it would you can't do that. Yep. yep. No, and you sometimes can't do people that. enjoy that. You can't yeah, afford it. I agree it. with Jesse. You, you can't, can't do that, but I still think there was plenty of great story in Halo books to have pulled from rather than make up one that no I one I think there's knows. good enough story in the game. The but show is unbelievably successful. The it's the, one of their biggest shows on Paramount+. Plus. You can't say no one likes it. You just can't. I don't. I, I say Shit. I don't like it. But fun, fun no. story, like... I told my I told my old man, hey, you know, go check out Fallout on Amazon Prime. It's uh, you know, I think you'll like it. My mum and dad are massive sci-fi fans. Now they're hitting seventy, right? And uh, this is this is my old man. I got a message uh, Friday night. Wow, that Fallout was the biggest load of shite I've ever wasted <laughs> precious moments of my time on. Even worse than Halo. I won't be bothering with it, but thanks for the option. And I, my reply, wow, really? I thought it was a great first episode. And he put lots of crying emojis. Are you a gamer who can suspend reality forever then? Uh, <laughs> Pure, uh, let, 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 I'll go through it. It's funny. Pure 1950s pastiche for starters and then goody two shoes versus the Reavers. Nah, makes The Last of Us look more than half decent. But hey, I'm just an old twat with no taste, eh? 
And I just, uh, look, I mean, how is it different from suspending disbelief for any type of alternate intro or sci-fi show, right? Because they love sci-fi. I don't, I don't, wow, did did he Trek? know for sure that the the beginning of the show is like the vault is it's set or the beginning of the show, the very first scene is set in October of 2077. Yeah, it's, it's the future. It like, yeah, it's it's not. Yeah, it yeah. looks like it's a future where we never invented microchips. But we got incredibly good at nuclear power and others in like tube technology. But why? But what is with the forties and fifties aesthetic, though? Uh, it was it's that retro futurist look of what people back then thought things would look like, like the Jetsons and that type of stuff. Yeah, that's what like. Ah, right. Yeah. And if if technology just skyrocketed in in those like power, nuclear power, and um. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. tube technology and all that type of stuff instead of ever going to microchips. That's why screens still look like tiny shit and all that because they never came up with a, a microchip that can do all that processing in a little tiny form factor. He, he goes on. He goes on. And I think, I think I'll read this just because it's funny. Um, so I asked him that question. How's it different? He was like, okay, compare it to Stargate Atlantis, Stargate or Deep Space Nine or the recent Star Trek Discovery. And I stopped him there. I was like, well, Stargate's that show so is awful, boring. but mostly because of awful writing characters and stupid storylines. And then he put, is the ghoul character, Walton Goggins, something from a Bethesda product? And I was like, well, it, it, it's it's a creature within the universe. Like mm, the character mm. is new for the show. Um, but I was like, he said it was well shot, um, but it's trying to cover too many bases and does none of it very well. The acting was pure corn, except for Goggins. But hey ho, I'll watch it some more. Maybe one day really? I'll have an epiphany. And then when Even I the dude at him, the army camp, the dude yeah, at the army camp, um, what's his name? Starts with M. Maximus. Maximus. Even what? Yeah. Even he was bad. I thought he was a good actor. I thought they were all good. Yeah, but, very um, and then. He ends it on, he was in like, like is, this a, is this based on a game then? And I was like, yeah. Yes. It's important to note while Fallout does very serious storylines, it's always delivered with humour, mostly. Ah, so it was a game. I thought so. Is that why it's so unbelievable and shite? <laughs> God, that's weird. I, I, that's such a weird thing to have it, issues with. It is. And I finished it with no different to a book or a film. Very prejudiced yeah. attitude, my dear sir. Yeah, did you Good like, night. That's, oh, that's Lord that's of the so Rings. Weird. Why is this Gandalf guy <laughs> casting magic? This is too unrealistic. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the universe. The it's, universe is hyper realistic so in that way. It's so weird to have issues with realism. It might just be yeah. when the aesthetic, the aesthetic is more normal like, and it's not high fantasy or super far future yeah. that you just can't can't get with it, it. just really nice so, if you yeah. told me that was next so dad watching... it would explain so much about his taste <laughs> i was watching um what's that show game of thrones and there's dragons in it there's no dragons, <laughs> dragons in the like, middle why ages why would they the put hell? dragons in this show it's like what <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> yeah that uh, is uh that is my old man god bless him that's so weird it did make so me laugh. Now, my, my dad and I don't always align on shows. Like, he loves Succession, and I don't like Succession. I found Succession boring. Um, you found Dune 2 boring, what do you obsessed. know? He was yeah, obsessed with on, Peaky man. Blinders. I haven't watched Peaky Blinders yet. It's, it's um, okay. It's, it's good fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I would no, say my, one, my one dad of the best used to things... be a Trekkie once upon a time. Uh, whose dad wasn't? Um, I think the... Um... One of my favorite parts about the show, without being spoilery of how it happens, is that there's really good character development. Like, that they focus... It's a show entirely about these three characters and some of the people around them. But it's it's all yeah. character development focused first and, and getting you yeah. in, engaged with these people and what they're going through and how they constantly run Completely into each other. how Halo did it. I, I still get upset <laughs> at the Halo TV show. I still get upset about it. You didn't like, like Dune. Uh, You're immediately disqualified. No one cares. I still yeah, to be fair, Nick, about the like the TV fact that show. you said Dune 2 was boring and you fell asleep. I just, like, I just bro, find those movies boring. I just you find are those on movies another boring. Planet. I don't get it. Like, I don't get absolutely it. Absolutely insane. Like, oh, I'm just going to watch the greatest cinematic masterpiece in our times. <laughs> it's kind of boring. There has been, it's there is boring. a disconnect, <laughs> I think, with people where if they don't like something they refuse to understand that it is still successful like i hate reality tv but i know for dollars to what, what they earn what, with it what, 
Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not, I'm not discussing. I'm not it's talking success. about you. I'm talking about people. I know it's successful. I'm talking about other people. I'm not talking. It's not always about you, Nick. I'm talking in general. So many I'm of the not discussions. Successful. Jesus Christ. I don't care what you know. I'm not. Never mind. Next thing. It's boring. <laughs> just ordinary men. I just want to be clear. Innocent We're all friends. Men. Um, mm, <laughs> just, just innocent men. We're just ordinary men. Just ordinary men. Just normal men. Halo Season 1 yeah, had I... made Halo Season 2 have to do a lot of work to elevate itself. Like, you can immediately tell it's it's better shot. It, it was more prestige feeling and had better showrunners. Um, but they were, they had to tie, they didn't want to just ignore Season 1. You can't do that. So they're tying things up and then getting pretty much a reset point for Season 3. So. Yep. I'm hoping Fingers season crossed. three is that moment where they're just like, fuck it, Halo CE, the game in a TV show. Just ugh, Halo CE be... as a show would fucking suck. It would be oh, so it would bad. Suck. It'd be the it, best. You can pull it, elements. It, would, it wouldn't be great. You can't just do the game, though. But so good. Like, Halo's not good enough as the games were because they were, you are the protagonist. He's not going to really do or say much. He's just going to be cool looking, but it's you and you can feel like it's you. It's, it's not... It wasn't a video game trying to be a movie. Like, The Last of Us was a easy adaption to keep faithful. It wasn't easy to do. It's obviously you need great writers to change things up and really good cinematographers, all that stuff. But with Halo, you do need to do more work to get it to be more interesting to work as a season of TV. So it's just it's always going to be a different thing. I'm going to ring Pierre. He will have nothing to do with that show. I'm going to ring you. You need to ring Kiki. Pierre will oh, say, really? "Call Kiki." Yeah, she's the she runs all transmedia at Xbox now. She got a huge promotion after her great work on the Halo show. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I still feel like I could. Anyway, let's let's move on. Fallout has already been renewed for another season. So if it's you're enjoying budget. it or you haven't yet started, it, you'll you'll be pleased to know it's it's getting some more, which is great. Jeff news. Bezos giving him a budget, huh? And it's going to California. Because they're doing a California finally realized ah we're losing way too many uh, productions that give people money here by not doing tax incentives so now they they do a lot more uh, this show is getting twenty million in tax incentives to move from mostly New York shooting to now um, Los Angeles shooting which makes sense since that's where it takes place too and it has a hundred and fifty two million dollar budget pretty good wow that's a big budget it's pretty full on hmm. Cool. And right. all the Fallout games everywhere on every platform have a massive sale for a little while with Fallout 4 yeah. getting a next-gen focused, and they said next-gen, it should say new-gen, new-gen focused yeah, patch for series gen. and PlayStation 5 consoles as well as updates on yeah. PC to give it widescreen and ultra-widescreen support alongside <gasps> a whole new, yeah. a whole new. I think it's a um, like a mod that does a whole enclave quest line which are the the main bad guys from i think the first game they were like the u.s government remnants um yeah huge patch finally coming out on the 25th so i'll i'll try and stream it that day once the patch is up it'll be fun yeah because you were going to stream fallout 4 and then you were like i'm gonna wait a week or two, mm -hmm. and then i streamed division 2 and i got more views than i did with destiny 2 and that was just a random division stream and destiny had new content and no one cared because that game's dead until the expansion boom into the Light sucks. I'm very sorry. Oh. I logged it. I logged into Destiny 2 on PS5 for the first time ever and accidentally activated the trophies, which I was trying to avoid doing. Because I couldn't get my stuff, all my Amazon Prime stuff. Like, you know how much free stuff I had banked? Mm -hmm. How much, like, yeah, they... Destiny 2 stuff I had banked? Mm -hmm. All these guns and shit. And I couldn't it's, figure out how to get them because yeah, that it's game's mostly... UI and the entire structure is a mess. It used to be even harder. You used to... You used to have to go to the hangar and then get it from Amanda, but now she's dead, so you can't get it from her. So now it's I think it's Rahul, the Engram guy. But yeah, that yeah. game's a mess. Go into Division it's not Two. Actually, Rahul, he's got a machine yeah. behind him, yeah. and you have to go. Oh, that that whole game, I don't know how people do it. That it's, game is a mess. When you go, when like, I went back to Division Two, everything's just right there, super easy. Really, it's the Diablo Three setup, and in Division Two is oh still just such God. a mess, and it drives me crazy. I feel like whoever the UI designer at Bungie was was 
huffing on their own gas, uh, like just their own farts. It's a UI completely made. UI it works fine on like... PC. Like it's so much easier to navigate with a mouse and keyboard. It's a pain in the dick with a controller. Oh my God. It's the worst. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, and this is Bungie. Like Bungie revolutionized the whole lobby, online lobby on consoles. And then they do that with Destiny. I'm like, oh my God. It's terrible. Anyway. Fallout. Fallout. Good show. Go watch it. Uh, in other news, Blizzard is back in China um with yeah. microsoft now taking the reins with activision in tow reigniting the deal that activision abandoned uh with netease to bring blizzard games back to the fold so that's been renewed along with xbox partnering with netease to bring netease games to the xbox platform mm. at some point in the future um there's not much more to say to it than that. Yeah. The, the big I one think, would you know, be Marvel Rivals. That was the one I think everyone was... Because yeah. it had already been said that the, it's, it is planned for consoles as well. They just didn't say that because the oh, beta is really? only on PC. Yeah, Yeah, that is a game I am very interested in. Overwatch, but with Marvel. Hell yeah. Mm. Also, I, I will be Iron that. Man. I hate Steam numbers. I wish Steam would start hiding their numbers because they just don't mean what people think they do. Not when games are multi-platform. No. I mean, Naraka. Naraka is on... Um, it's enormous. It's, it's a huge game. But that's, oh, oh, I thought you were going to say it's because that game actually has a massive um, player base. Naraka Blade Point. Yeah, and but that's on the console. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was on Game Pass for a while before they made it free to play. Oh. They've got a few Marvel games. Yeah, Marvel they've, Jewel. they've mostly been... Um, mobile and they're just starting and they they have a new initiative to do more pc and console stuff and so having a deal with xbox yeah. super neat yeah love it um mm, 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 mm. speaking of blizzard oh no maybe we'll talk about that later <laughs> no we could we could talk about it now mate you've, you've set up the segue now so let's follow it through oh look it's not news but i just wanted to talk about yikes anyway <laughs> and his tweet that he clearly didn't think out because I saw that tweet and I'm like, dude, that like, do you understand that you are a very wealthy man? Your perspective is coming from that of an extremely wealthy man who used to run, used to be an exec in major game publishers. You're like, oh man, I wish we could tip. And did you, like, you know what it is about yikes? Well, He's he's literally a console warrior that happened to work at game companies. Like, have you seen? I just happened to check who he's following. You know, he doesn't follow a single Xbox person. What a child! Uh, I'm not surprised. What an absolute, what an absolute not child! Not surprised. What? So, <laughs> so if one person pissed him off at Xbox, that's it now. Like, all no, nah, he's not friends with anyone. Fuck them all. Just don't worry about it. No, he is a child. He is 100% a child. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> but but the reason I wanted to talk about his tweet was because there, there is some merit in what he's saying. Like, if they, if they could implement some sort of tipping system at sort of a game slash publisher level, so at a restaurant, I don't know how it works in the U.S., there are restaurants here and cafes here where there's like a tip jar and then at the end of the day, week, whatever, they'll get all the money in that tip jar and distribute it amongst the employees. Whatever is in there. If there was a similar thing in games where you could, you know, a menu within the game where you could tip them just because you love the game so much and then there was a way to ensure that that money was distributed amongst the actual developers... I think that's not so terrible. Having just in, in and of itself, right? But in terms of Mike's tweet, just like, again, because, you know, he had to get that jab in too. Oh, games like Horizon and God of War. And because, you know, there's no good single player games on Xbox, right? He just had to name those PlayStation games. 
And it's like, how do you not have the the wherewithal to understand that, like, yeah, man, that's what DLC is. That's what deluxe editions are. That's what merch is. You love you the can, game. You can you now support gift it. the game to your friends if you want to. Gift like, the game to your friends on Xbox or... Um, he also had another see, tweet. He didn't think that because PlayStation doesn't have gifting. So, of course, he doesn't think of gifting. What, what, he, um, what he also tweeted that got me was how PlayStation... Um, under promises and over delivers, and I'm like, that is over the, delivers. That is the exact opposite. Their their whole thing is being high high promise prestige. Now they might deliver sometimes. Yeah. People love the games and do the the ones that really do like the length. Even if some of us think they're a little too padded out at times, but they do not under promise, like at all. And if over delivering is one game a year, then what the fuck were they promising? I We're going to give you no games this year. <laughs> oh, they gave us one. They gave Man, us... they sure did over-deliver. There's one we're going to talk about later that they uh, they gave their fans, and uh, very few seem to buy it. Oh, that's, he's, just, he's just such a child. For a grown, wealthy man who is an exec at I game mean, companies, he is an absolute child. I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to throw away that kind of... That kind of description i would just say that that was not a well thought out tweet like if he just said i sure wish when i played a small indie game if i loved it yeah, i could tip the dev no one would be disagreeing with the tweet correct but leaving it as a as a catch-all of oh, i just played this 120 and twenty special edition from ubisoft and who boy i had a fun time i sure wish i could tip them wasn't like, even ubisoft he's talking about he kept mentioning playstation's games just, outside just, of just, Baldur's gate 3 I was just generally saying, like, if you're going to tip a AAA developer, you're not. You're, you're giving money to the publisher. The other one was Take Two. His whole and tweet then was, from man, yeah. I wish I could give PlayStation more money. It was, like, it fuck, was dude. Two, just apply for Jim Ryan's job and get it over with. It was two PlayStation sake. games, like, a Take seriously. Two game, Larian, and From Software. <clears throat> oh, he's just, I'm actually staggered at his level of pettiness and immaturity. Uh, like I'm actually, I'm actually staggered. Like, I don't come think on, man! Anything surprises me nowadays, really. But you've got to be a little bit better than that, dude. Okay, he may have an issue with Phil. He may have an issue with whoever, <clears throat> but he does not follow a single person from Xbox. Not one. A company he was at for how long? Decade or yeah. more? Yeah. Well, like, look at it. Look at it from his point on, of bro. view, though, man. Like, look at it from his point of view. Before the acquisition closed, he was like, "Can't wait, ready to take the, take the lead. I can't wait to get stuck back in." You know, he was trying to be a team player. The acquisition closes, he's like, "Mike, you're out," and off he goes. And like, that's not really been explained or talked about. Like, maybe you would be petty because, like, you know, a lot for a lot of developers, Blizzard is like this mythical hold thing on, to go on. and work for. But we don't know. We don't I, know I assume, exactly. I, I, no, I assume he always hasn't followed anyone from Xbox since leaving <clears> Xbox. I think he he probably recently after after the Activision Blizzard exit probably started unfollowing because you know he was probably told on on the day one yeah you're not, you're not staying. So much that that would be my assumption. Complete conjecture. Yeah, complete speculation on my part. But what do I know? No. I mean, it pretty much every main executive over know, there. Yeah got fired him and lulu and all them like it was a lot of people who had a lot mm. of complaints over the years and we know the ones with mike which were focused on the really bad company wide meetings and shit and you know there's always more to uh to stories and you rarely ever get to find out because even if people talk True story. it's only one person out of a company that had how many freaking people did they hire right as microsoft was buying them like many thousands of people at yeah, that company no. so it's uh it's tough to know. I just, I don't know. I, I read that tweet and I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, are you for real? Like, you you are an ex, an obscenely wealthy person, and you're sitting there talking about man, yeah. seventy dollar game. But I wish I could give them more. Uh, well, there's it's been in the news as man. well. A lot of publishing houses are like, uh, game game purchases at seventy dollars are down across the board. Mm -hmm. Like so, I think a lot of yeah. There was the like, Saber uh, CEO was like he doesn't think seventy dollar games are going to last. Not too because much. they don't want to. They're just 
they need to get their costs down, which then lets game prices be down. Like the cheaper cost of um, Hellblade 2 is probably going to lead to a lot more sales for it because, yeah, it is shorter. But when it's just cheaper up front, that's been one of the main things <clears throat> a lot of publishers are realizing with, when Steam changed a lot Good. of its pricing for global stuff, upping it across the board because people were using VPNs to circumvent their local pricing. Um, people have gone in and just gone back and manually lowered their prices because they're like, the the cost of living sucks. Most people don't have a ton of money. And if a game's the equivalent of a, a week's salary for them, they're not going to buy it. But if it's 20% of that, you just end up getting so many more sales that it's worth it. So... Yeah, I, I, it, I hope it leads to a reduction in chasing the AAA unicorn. Like, just honestly, ga- I, game developers an... need to realize mm. games don't need to be these massive they things. Don't have to they be. Just we don't be. need that shit all the time. Like, we don't need it. Look at the game everyone's going crazy for at the moment, Bolatro. Like, it's not. Like, you don't have to just chase that AAA shit all the time with all the best grass and all the... Be- it's unnecessary. I completely agree. I'm not saying Hopefully it shouldn't exist. Change. Don't take what I'm saying is it shouldn't exist. But we're in this phase and we're slowly coming out of it now where everything is like, oh my God, it has to be the greatest graphics and it's got to be the biggest yeah. the world. Make sure the world is huge and there's a bunch of shit you can do in it. And do the <laughs> don't fucking need that all the time, man. But that was the thing yeah. where they're like, don't. oh, they're, they're not. We want to use our own IP and take less risks. And it's like, well, less risk would also just be less cost. That would immediately the risk is having this huge cost. And then like Mortals of Avium, they go all right. out. They make this incredibly beautiful, you know, shooter with this new company, and then it doesn't sell great because it's kind of generic. And even though it looks nice, it's really hard to stick your head above the crowd. In, in those with those types of games and i know i would never have played it if they didn't send me a code to stream and even when i did i was like this is very pretty this gameplay is pretty fun but this world they created just doesn't vibe with me and that's always a problem you run into like you, you, if you it's really hard especially in something super magical medieval sci-fi e to get a cool aesthetic that sort of really resonates with people if it's not already something established so if you try to make a big one like an anthem or something, and it just doesn't hit in various ways for various reasons, you lose everything. You lose all your money, and now they've just furloughed most of their remaining devs after firing half the company, and they look to be pretty much done. Who knows? Stop spending yep. so much mm. if you can. Doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be that way. You don't need to. You don't need to. And Gen Z, especially Gen Z and Gen Alpha, don't care. <clears throat> My kids Gen upstairs Z and playing Gen Minecraft. Alpha do not care. It's regular old Minecraft having yeah. fun building a when, world. Like. Well, I honestly thought because my son got so excited about the Spider Man 2 controller that we got him, mm. I thought he'll love Spider Man on PlayStation. So I installed Spider Man on his PlayStation 5. He played it for 20 minutes, asked why he couldn't skip the movies, and then didn't touch mm. it. Ever he you legitimately asked. He's like, "Why can't I skip these movies?" And then he never went back to Spider Man. Never went back. Shots. He doesn't care that it's got amazing graphics, and he doesn't care about all that crap. Like Jet Gen Z and Gen Alpha, man, they don't care. They do not give a shit. And these companies are going to have to adjust because it's a ge- whole generation of kids that do not give a shit. So it's gonna look. I remember when I was that age, I used to care. Remember when a new game came out back then? Oh, look at the graphics! Oh, look how cool it looks! We used to care about that shit, and you can see it in us now. So many of us now are like, "Oh my god!" The first thing we talk about is the graphics. Kids these days don't care. They don't give a shit about graphics in games. Yeah. It's actually quite surprising to me because we are an entire generation that cares so much about graphics. Yet the ones coming through could not care less. They couldn't care less. And I think it's good. I think it's great. They also don't care about jank, unfortunately. (laughs) (laughs) But but still, they don't give a shit about jank either. But um, yeah, it's... Man, gaming's going to be super interesting in like 15 to 20 years to see what it looks like. It's going to be so interesting. But yeah. Um, 
What else? That's what yikes. else? What else? That is that's that is yikes. that was a tangent on yikes. Um, Xbox new console. I don't know if you caught any of the conversation, Nick, that we had uh, during headlines or based off of Tom Warren's retraction that it would just be a native Xbox console. Instead, the suggestions are out there now that they are looking at some sort of hybrid device. So to be clear, still acts like an Xbox and plays your existing digital games and existing library, but also has the capability of running what would be considered to be native PC so some PC kind stores. of dual boot Hybrid. situation kind I, of thing? I don't want to use the phrase dual boot. Um, no, no, I'm not saying it will be dual hybrid boot. Is, I'm saying is better, kind of like Most likely a, a device dual boot situation. that can run the Xbox OS core and a Windows yes. core. Most likely that's, that's some That's what I'm sort trying of, to say. So, yeah, some, but like potentially at the same time. It, how open is the Windows OS core? Is it just all the launchers are in there for games type of thing because there's always the security risks the more access you give people in a system that has everything xbox like even if you try and lock that all down people are really good at hacking through windows <clears throat> i wonder so. if it would be like an app i wonder if it'd be like an app so you're actually booting into the xbox os like normal like a normal xbox and baked into that there's like an app that takes you over to windows and like does something behind the scenes and takes you into windows if it was a that gog style cool. thing that it just aggregates all the launchers like the way gog works is is if you have the launchers and you're logged in on them gog will aggregate everything you have access yes. to and just give it to you there if they had that type I know, of thing i have gog yeah if they had that it's type of not much, not all of it though some a little bit, tiny bit of it is but yeah so how would you access the pc stuff the ubisoft the connection thing? is broken on it I don't know. It, it all intrigued. depends on how they implement it. Um, I, I'd still prefer just the native Xbox handheld. Uh, so I, I do want to think that's the way to go. I want to Well, I mean, it would have native. It would be a native, native Xbox on it, but also give the option for more. So it wouldn't give up the native Xbox part. It would just have more options. I think that's for what's it. important to understand. Yeah. You're still going to yeah. get what you want. I think. Yeah, if you don't um, ever want to touch the PC side, you don't have to. It is the xbox experience we know also i want to say uh thank congratulations to chat there's uh they're not feeding the troll you guys are rule yeah yeah don't feed them now what or else I have... there's, there's a troll yeah there's a troll is there mm -hmm. yeah oh okay i just saw it now. <laughs> but yes it's it's, okay. it's Mac machiavelli no one cares the, the the main thing and um weren't we just having a discussion about don't worry about AAA and yeah. no one cares. Like kids don't care about graphics. Like we were just saying that. Like yeah. We were literally just saying that. It comes down to, okay. I think, the way everything has to move. And there's a story later about an exclusive for PlayStation that is not performing um, the way people might expect. And it's because you just kind of need to have access to everything you can everywhere. It just makes it so much better. Uh, there, I think people are finally realizing that I, as a customer, only benefit from having more things in more places. We might lose some of that bespoke pushing of the hardware a bit, but that also hasn't really happened because these are all the same types of hardware. They're all just x86 for the most part. Um, as long as things run fine, most people don't give a shit. They just want access and cross-play and cross-progression and being able to play with all their friends and all these different things. Like That is the best for us so in the long run even xbox i think has pivoted later than they would have liked to because they know it's a huge change to everything people have already been losing their minds this year over it freaking throwing their xboxes away and stomping their feet on social media God, i can't wait for the handheld mm. i can't wait i'm very curious how I big it'll wait. be i want playstation i want playstation to do it as well they can't go all handheld slash they, hybrids going forward. I would say you don't never expect that from PlayStation because the way they do their API doesn't work. Like they they can't minimize they can't make a little tiny PS5. And even they have a very specific path for how they have to upgrade to maintain their backwards compatibility. 
and they don't. No, have, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, just, I, I would love it I'm if just they saying could. That's what I want. But I'm not saying would, it'll happen. Yeah, it would almost have to be some huge gargantuan effort to again ape more what Microsoft is doing to have that forward compatibility team we talked about last week from Sarah Bond, oh, no, where they're Mark working Cern real is, hard. Mark Cerny's a super genius. You'll, You'll figure it out. Know. Mark Cerny's a super genius. Well, most of the time they just out. say, AMD, can you please figure out this for us? Like the back compat. They, that only worked because AMD worked their butts off to, to make it work. The only the only problem is, I don't. I, the only reason, the only main reason I don't see Sony doing it is because Sony's all about that AAA life. Everything has to look the best. They were. Otherwise, our accurate. customers. Uh, the, the new. Our customers are used to the best. The new CEO. Um, I think he's kind of made it clear that can't do that anymore. It still feels like yeah. Jim Ryan was kicked out gonna... for that for push for doubling down <clears throat> on that. I do wonder if if there's going to be really significant changes, like where where that starts to be felt for the wider PlayStation community. Why are my games looking but, as good anymore? But like this know, year but, alone, like. But the, but this is the thing I've said this before you. With PlayStation, the, the funny thing is PlayStation consoles don't need to be powerful. That's the irony of it because their developers are so talented at making those games look incredible on dated hardware that they don't need a super powerful console. Like, people forget God of War, Horizon, these are PS4 games. They mm. still look really really good on ps4 level hardware so if you can get a handheld that is roughly a ps4 level of output with some really good upscaling tech and all that sort of stuff you can still have incredible looking games man last i checked horizon zero dawn to this day is still one of the better looking games out there and that is a straight up ps4 ass game uh. like Compared to There's Forbidden West on PC, around. and it's it's a massive jump. Yeah, there's been a man, but there's been a lot of conversation around people uh, notice how how pretty and how how all the PlayStation games have shipped with performance modes after the Hellblade two thirty FPS stuff, and it's like all of those games are iterative, built off of their PS four yeah. cousins, and mostly cross gen. And, mo and like there's that's a very fundamental reason the scope of those games and this and the target of those games is broadly different than something like hellblade 2 which is the first uh next gen you know outside of like from first party i think is probably the better way to say it that isn't like immortals of avium for example it would um, be the fourth for push Xbox. The... Yeah, yeah yeah i'm still yeah. i'm not gonna lie though i'm still i'm i'm like i i complained about the black bars ages ago Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just don't you don't like the choice they made of going as as far as they could graphically to tell the story the best they could. Like you you would prefer that they lower that a bit, get the frame rate up. You know, it's not a thing where they just couldn't yeah, do but, it; they just didn't want to. And but to, but to, you've always been against that. To me, it just feels like sacrifice after sacrifice. Like so, we've got black bars. We don't have an eighty four K. We don't have sixty. Nothing will be native like, 4K ever. They're, that's just not a thing anymore. It's always going to be a reconstruction. Even on PC, there's no point in running native 4K. I have a card that can do it, and I never use native 4K because it's not worth the hit to performance. Um, but with them, for, it wasn't worth the sacrifice to their graphic and animation tech to do a higher native resolution or a higher frame rate with the very mediocre hardware that is the current generation like at this point it's going on three years old now like it's it's or three years in a month six years hmm? six years old really it, it was designed two years yeah prior. i was about to say tech to it's, it's releasing. talking about yeah, yeah people keep talking about when the console released the actual yeah. hardware is older than Th that, that hardware is technically. equivalent to a 2070 super which is already very old and it's only 500 but you want a really good console that can keep up for the entire generation with what companies are going to want to push you're spending like 1500 bucks like that's the only way because that's the cost that doesn't even get you a 4090 like that 1500 dollars, you'd still be about 500 bucks short most of the time for the single gpu 
let alone the rest of the freaking kit. Like, PC will I'm not always lie, do though. more. It's funny. Just Everyone just laughed at me. Everyone laughed when I said we'd need mid-gen refreshes. We always will. As long as developers keep pushing, we're always going to need mid-gen refreshes. doesn't matter what hardware comes out. Because devs can't help themselves. They're always going to push. We're always going to need them. And I do wonder how it's going to play out. I really do. I wonder how it's going to play out with Sony having a Pro and Xbox having nothing. Will they release their next Xbox in 2026? I don't know. The thing with the, the PS5 Bold Pro... strategy, Cotton. PS5 Pro is not focused on higher frame rates. Like, I know that's a part of getting certified as a PS5 Pro-enabled title, but it's not much of a G CPU difference. So if you're already CPU limited, it's not going to help you very much. It is focused I, I on know, I know you're ray saying tracing that. and res I understand. In resolution. <clears throat> I, I understand the logic behind that, and people keep saying it, but people said the same thing about the PS4 Pro. And then when the PS4 Pro came out, most of those games got updates to go to 60, despite the same CPU. So, but uh, it's for games that I are know, not like obviously they they were GPU else. eliminated to try and have the higher. So it depends if a game is GPU limited right now on the res, on the the frame rate and stuff and being consistent, sure. But if it's CPU limited, probably not. Like maybe if it, it'll be more consistent or you can get more. I wouldn't expect a lot more sixty. I would expect maybe more forty FPS modes for when you're running a hundred twenty hertz display. We'll see. We'll see. I like I said, I don't like I bought a PS4 Pro like straight away when it came out. I got the I got the normal one and then I got the God of War one when that came out. With the PS5 Pro, I'm not sure I'll bother. Only because all of Sony's games have performance modes anyway. And I don't play my PS5 a ton. You do know so Sony I don't though. Know if this time around it'd be worth it. They are the types that would what? hold off performance modes that could be in that game and only let it be in the pro version to try and make you buy it i wouldn't put yeah, it past maybe. them also if by maybe. then we've gotten some sort of sponsorship deal and you got a kick-ass gaming pc you definitely don't need it yeah i do wonder how you would how you would actually feel having a, a really decent gaming pc like right in front of i've you had one really. i had an alienware laptop a really good one. no i mean an actual really Not good desktop because even the best very a 40 80 a, like a 40 70 in a, a laptop is like a freaking 40 40 in a desktop they're not really equivalent like a really yeah. good top end gaming pc when everything's a locked 120 or you got like 240 sometimes depending on your screen there's nothing like it <clears throat> risk it i literally just said that risk it for the we also the literally saying what I was just responding to that. Like we literally also just said that a lot of uh, PlayStation games are based on last gen's yeah. engines. And of course, yes, most PS games are already sixty. Yes, like all all the Sony's first party games, I think this generation have offered sixty modes. But the vast majority of them, not all, but the vast majority are also cross gen games too. So they should have sixty modes. Um, having said that. Uh, their, a lot of their PS5 only games have 60 modes like Ratchet Returnal was 60 anyway and then you can um, run those on very weak PC hardware and it works okay the only one that doesn't are the some <clears throat> uh, some of the portals in Ratchet take too long to load if you're even on a good mechanical hard drive like outside of the gimmicks there's no reason why any of their games haven't been able to Insomniac's fantastic at Same making man. engine. So like Sony's got Sony's got very talented developers. In terms of technical capability, they're just very talented developers. And that was actually one of the teams that got fired. I feel like that I forget the name of it, but the their group that goes was it X Dev or I forget, man, but the group that goes Ice Ice, I think it's Ice. Oh. It, it was the, it's yeah, ice. the group and and I think a lot of them and then uh the woman whose name I can't remember who was there for like 20 or 30 years. Like there was a lot of people fired. Uh, Booth. Booth. Was it Booth? Connie Booth. 
Yeah. Where is she yeah. now? I saw we, we did a story on EA, her. I think, right? She's she's EA, yeah, yeah. Thank oh, you. Oh, really? Really? Uh, Deadly Headley in the chat, he just said hello. Just want to uh, let people know he, he did his first article for XboxZero.com this week um, on Hellblade yeah. 2 and the recent uh, deep dive into, you know, how they did the whole psychosis element within Hellblade 2, like even better than they'd done it before. Um, worth worth the read. Go check it out. And congrats on the first article. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a super chat now. Uh, executive producer, Assassin Entertainment. As someone who bought a PS5 at launch and a Xbox Series X not long after, I'd be okay with pro versions. Also, maybe if Frisk had stopped talking about football, he'd have actually heard what you said, Nick. Yeah, that's right. Great. Uh, japes all right okay that's enough about frame rates um that all started uh, with handheld consoles it did it did you know we just went we went off the deep end um this one's an interesting one um possibility space now this was a studio that was set up by the original founder jeff strain. Here, jesse jeff strain of uh undead labs it was undead one labs, of the, the developers four State of decay studios he started after yeah, selling state of decay and it is now the second Four. one he has shut down yeah he's still got two more i don't feel great about them but this was the big one with like a super team with a lot of people right. working for years on building this whole big thing it's like he the weirdest thing is he like he deleted his linkedin he deleted his social media after the first one and then this one happened in a random out of nowhere in the middle of the day email that blamed people in working in the company for leaks as being the main reason why they had to be shut down. Yes, I read that. It's because uh, Kotaku contacted them about an article that was yet to be published asking some questions. Yeah, asking for, yeah. I was like, it's been, it has been really bad. Uh, yeah, it is, it is rough. You okay, Nick? Electro. Yeah. Deep breath. Mm. I always play yellow deck. Yellow deck. Start with an extra ten bucks. This is not a nice coffee. This is a mocha boba tea. Wow. Is that good? Ooh, sugar tea. It's incredibly good. Sugar tea. Um, I mean most tea shit, so this is very yeah, good. Jeff Jeff Strain. I, I hadn't heard of him a hell like I remember him doing a podcast unlocked episode or unfiltered once upon a time with Ryan McCaffrey. He was talking to Jeff Strain. Um Seemed like a normal dude, but mm. now seeing his whole thing was right now less so. Everyone in the every single person in the dev part of gaming should unionize, and now he's two years later shutting everyone down like in the worst way imaginable. Like, like he's just running away in the middle. Oh, it yeah. feels like, allegedly, he's just running away in the middle of the night yeah. with it. Like, I don't know. It's it's so weird. I, I don't. It's isn't it. It's a it really is. weird Money's story breaking weird. down in a very weird way where you start up four companies, you randomly out of nowhere shut one down, and then a couple months later you randomly out of nowhere shut the main one down that had like the super team that's been doing years and years of work deep into production. Mm. The, like nothing to show for all this money spent after selling your original company to Microsoft, staying on for a little bit before skedaddling. Um it's a really weird situation. Very strange behavior, I think. Um, but yeah, that's a story that, that was out there. I did see an email about uh, from him or a letter from him or something, public statement, uh, talking about the mistreatment of devs and how seeing all these firings is horrible and know you're valued. Mm -hmm. And then to read the bizarre internal email to everybody saying, you're all fired now. <laughs> like was just like but why but why like because i know that even though i know it's not the real reason but why would your employees giving information about your upcoming project lead to you needing to shut down the studio i think it kind of says that they're already in a pretty rough spot um clearly and, yeah so he you know. it's in the statement um he got messages he got an email from ethan gotch of kotaku 
And eventually, after having discussions about these questions that were asked by Ethan in the email, his partner expressed low confidence they would be willing to invest the additional resources needed to complete the game, so we mutually agreed to cancel Vonnegut, which was the game's um, thingamabob. I'll put the uh, tweet in the chat, because it is in... it is... it feels unhinged, almost. Yeah, it's really oh, okay. weird. It is blaming the cancellation okay. of the game and closing of the studio on this report from Kotaku that yeah. hadn't gone public yet entirely. Yeah. Okay. Very strange. Yeah. Oh, well. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's a weird story. Don't have your cake and eat it too. Um, we were on the topic of uh, AAA development costing too much and, and causing <laughs> trouble. Um, Zed Huge, friend of Xbox Era. Zuge. Oh, massive friend. Big friend of Xbox Era. Loves us. Yeah. Loves us to bits. Um, Founding I, <laughs> member. Of Resetera. <laughs> um, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Rebirth may have only Giant sold around knob. 2 million copies. Um as uh, you explained it and then got a load of hate about it and was like, oh, this is why I don't comment on sales. Um, because people freaked out that, yes, this is the isn't strategy. He, isn't he like an analyst in the game industry? Yes, he is. He is a, he so is why a shouldn't he comment on sales then? Because fanboys are insane. Fanboys are crazy. Takes one to no one, I guess. Um, but yeah. Maybe he should block them all. That'd fix the problem, wouldn't it? He, he Maybe he should just block them. He did unblock us. It's all okay. He re-blocked okay. me. Oh, you never unblocked he me. He re-blocked me. He re-blocked me because when it came out that Bungie was being looked at by Microsoft, I tagged him and said, hey, any chance of a little apology there, friend? <laughs> I would have blocked you too. And of course, in extremely mature fashion, he just went with the block. Why? Why would you block? Why not be an adult? And be like, shit, my bad. I never got unblocked. When all, all right. What I said was, I promise we weren't doing this in like some sort of fanboy or clickbait way. It, it was something that John was just an idiot about. What a moron, huh? And he blocked me. Probably because I made fun of John. Wow. It's great. Like, so many. It's actually the one, the one. I mean, one of many horrible things social media has done is. It's, it's like it's made adults revert into children. It's not, I think there's not a lot of adults anymore. I think people can media. just choose to choose I to exist in him. the bubbles that they want. I didn't. You know? I didn't make. I didn't say any anything bad about him. I didn't call him any names. I didn't. All I said was, "Hey, man, any chance of a little apology?" Because he was happy. Well, well hold on a second. <clears throat> It's fair enough, isn't it? So I'm not he's it happy isn't. to he's happy to publicly shit all over us, and none of us blocked him, and he publicly shit all over us. All I did when the story came out to be true was, "Hey man, any chance of an apology?" Block. Yeah. That speaks volumes about your character as a human being. I don't know, man. It's, it's 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 just Twitter, isn't it? Lots of people just insta block anyone they don't want to have any engagement with. Maybe you just saw your name. It was like, oh, I really hate that guy. Just, you know, cut it off at the source. Like, get rid of him. You never know. You Grow never the know. fuck up. Seriously. Um, but yeah, onto the actual subject at hand. Final Fantasy VII Grow Rebirth. Fuck up. Exclusive to PlayStation. Only sold around 2 million copies. I thought I thought AAA bangers and Square Enix and PlayStation were all were a thing. What's, what's going Eventually, on? Eventually, I mean, it looks like the new CEO of Square has learned that maybe they need to stop with Sony's money hats. Maybe just a bit. The new CEO is like, oh, hold on. All these other Japanese publishers are doing so much better than us, and we're the only ones taking yep. Sony's money hats. I think he's the are one. The he's bands? there because they learned that. Like, they, that last CEO was gone because they were already... The moment that they changed, you saw Phil out on stage and... Final Fantasy is now finally on Xbox again with 14 and like they're just they are stuck in an incredibly old deal. Uh, I can't imagine the financials on that deal make a ton of sense in today's day and age now. Um, 
because a lot of people are like, oh, they probably got a huge bag. But yeah, it was it? It might have been a we ignore Xbox and PC big bag in 2014. I bet you that's a lot different than a oh shit. If we ignore PC and Xbox in 2024, it's gonna cost us a shit ton of money amount. So. I think that's kind of why you're seeing them. I think uh, they, maybe uh, as part of this, Square. they said, we want to get this game out in three years. They got this one out in a few years. They want to get the next one. They want to get these done and get away from this contract because every major exclusive they've done with PlayStation has not seemed to be worth it. The remake did $7 million. Rebirth is doing half of that, if even. Uh, Babylon's Fall was a massive flop. Foam Stars was a massive flop like they i don't think they've done well on a single one of these big timed exclusives did i read that foam stars has lost 95 percent of its player base since launch yeah i think that was uh true trophies so it's gone from like 10 players to like one well it was pps plus so it had a small community you know it, it had everyone who has playstation plus could redeem it and own it forever as long as they have playstation plus and now no one's playing it I just think maybe Square liked seeing upfront guaranteed money. Yeah. And it's maybe way to we're do just business. bad at maybe they were just bad at estimating or maybe they didn't have faith in their products and they just wanted that upfront money. You mean it the, could be that simple. Which pivot more the Square pivot cuz Square is already pivoted hard. They fired much like Sony fired their CEO. You you generally assume Big, seemingly out of nowhere, CEO changes like that generally are because other people aren't happy. And the moment they did that, they started being chummy, chummy with Xbox, and there's just more shit going everywhere. Like, yeah, it's it the when ships are very big and contracts are very long, it can take a while to seem like turning. But I, I definitely think that, yeah, Square is looking at Sega, who is not only all in on multiplat, but they're like all in on play anywhere. Like a Dragon, Ishin, and mm. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth both launched play anywhere, even though they weren't Game Pass. Like Infinite Wealth, you get the PC version on the Microsoft Store. Capcom does that with a lot of stuff um, and is in on Game Pass mm. with their smaller titles and brings their other ones later. Like but companies are. Nemco, Nemco is pretty much fully multiplayer as well yeah like there are some all, smaller JRPGs all the major that japanese are, publishers are if they're exclusive now it's normally switch because that is very big in japan unlike playstation 5 which is not that big like japan is dominated by the wrong. switch even capcom and sega have a couple of games here and there that aren't on xbox but they're far more multiplayer than square are I just I don't know I find a there's a there's a bit of an there's a bit of an irony in the fact that you know there's this brand association with Final Fantasy and PlayStation when the first six Final Fantasy games were Nintendo exclusives. That was a Nintendo that was a Nintendo associated franchise for the first six iterations of that game. Six, yeah, the mm-hmm. first six I'm pretty sure. And then they hated Nintendo. And then seven was, then seven was money headed. Well, um, people were very mad with Nintendo at that point too. I know because they stuck to things. cartridge. Yeah, and also their practices. They stuck to cartridge. Their practices. They were always shitty to deal oh, with. Oh, they were assholes. Yeah, they were terrible. Oh, Nintendo and PlayStation were hadn't assholes. become, didn't have the reputation for being shitty assholes yet. Like uh, Nintendo, we've got a Nintendo super chat. By the way, yes, yeah, so I saw that. Foam Stars is greater than Collingwood. <laughs> And there was an, I don't know, did we get um, the other one from Assassin Entertainment? He did another one as well. It was on this topic, yeah. Yeah. It's in the private oh. chat. Uh, executive producer, I will shout to the clouds until my lungs bleed. Stop with the third party exclusive Square Enix. Sega and Capcom learn they need to do the same. Yeah, I know. And I think, I think they are learning or have learned. Um, I just, it, it's funny what we, was, what we were just saying. Nintendo at their worst during the 80s and 90s are probably worse than anything PlayStation's ever done. Like Nintendo at their worst, they were just, God, they were insufferable bricks. Like they were just, seriously, man. Like, you know, a lot a lot of games that came to Mega Drive eventually, third-party games that were formerly Super Nintendo or Nintendo exclusives, Sega had to port them themselves because of the way the contracts were set up with Nintendo. 
Sega had to port these games themselves. Wow. So imagine if Microsoft had to internally develop Final Fantasy 16 for when that comes to Xbox. Because of the contract Sony has with Square, Microsoft has to internally develop it. Could you imagine? I can just be insane. That's what Sega had to do with some games because of the contracts Nintendo had in place. Like Nintendo was just like, you're talking about a company that like all the way along were saying to Sony, yeah, you make our Sega CD. You make it for the Super Nintendo. And yep, 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 yep. It gets all the way to the end. And then Nintendo's at the last second is like, eh, fuck it. We're going to go with cartridge. Don't get stuffed. And Sony's like, what? Like, they're just, Nintendo were just, my God, they were horrible. They were absolutely horrible back in the day. Like, a lot of a lot <laughs> of the problems you see in the gaming industry today, you can probably trace back to Nintendo and shit they used to do in the 80s. Like, a, a part of the reason we're so stuck in our ways about the price of gaming is because the price of games was so outrageous technically back then, thanks to thanks to cartridge cost and all that sort of shit. Like, man, I know I love them now, but man, they were bastards back then. Horrible bastards. But yeah. Anyway. <laughs> what do you say? Ex examples <clears throat> of what? Assassin Entertainment? I, mean, I would imagine Nintendo examples being shitheads. Didn't I just give up? This is where we yell at John again, up? and he's like, I know. <laughs> I was just doing the Sega, when Sega do what Nintendo don't and stuff, is it that he's referring to? I don't know. No, I'm, I'm guessing he means examples of Nintendo being shitty to uh, other, you know, devs and other stuff. But the main one, like the example that you gave, that was a good one, is how Sega had to use the make their own stuff they couldn't get a port from the actual yes. company they had to make the port yeah um i'm just seeing a question from mr hipshot mr hipshot i teased it on twitter ages ago that it was coming octopath 2 i, I don't i haven't heard anything they announced since, that one? but i had been told a bit but they announced it. yeah yeah but i'm saying i teased that i teased that long before it was officially announced I just haven't heard any update on when it's <clears> actually <throat> going to come. I have no idea. You know what? They announced Neon White last June and said winter. And that one never came. Yeah. John's so tired. I'm sorry, John. I am. I am. What do you mean? I've flagging. barely spoken this episode. <laughs> I have barely <laughs> spoken this episode. So don't fucking blame me for how long this is going for. Sorry, are you are you are you are you serious? Is this yes? Serious? I have was that barely a serious fucking statement? spoken. I have is that, barely. That is a serious statement. Episode. Okay, it is. It is a hundred percent. Okay, I was just checking. I wasn't hallucinating or mishearing. There was a thing. Was a so when we were Hardly locally spoken. recording on Streamyard, um, it's a it's an uncompressed wave, best quality you can get. But the more someone talks, the more noise there is, the bigger the file is. My file would be about two hundred and fifty megabytes for a whole show. John would be close to a gig. Um, Nick would be about four gigs. <laughs> That's fine. Other episodes I do talk. This no, that was episode every episode. It, that was every episode. There was no exception. It was always you. You were always at about 80% of the I show. Barely spoken. I love you guys. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to pick the uh, last couple of things. Dead Space 2. Not happening anymore. Poor old Jeff Grubb copped it in the news quite a bit. Um Nick, as a purveyor of rumours and leaks and such, uh, do you feel for Mr. Grubb in this in this eventuality? Did you keep an eye on this? This is it. Yeah, I saw. I saw. EA was like, "Oh, companies deny shit all the time." That's true. Like, come on, man. Like, have we not learned? Like, I hate. I hate the way people react to shit like this, and they believe what they want to believe when they want to believe it. Like. How many times I see people go, oh, the company's lying, but then when it suits them, oh, the company's right and the leaker's wrong and the leaker made <clears> shit <throat> up. It's like, well, when are you going to decide that you think the company's lying or not? Like, that's what companies do. 
Like companies lie all the time. Like, yeah, I don't understand. Like Jeff, Jeff, like all Jeff was talking about, I, I'm pretty sure Jeff didn't say they're making Dead Space too. I remember him saying, yeah, they're they're considering it. Like I I tweeted ages ago that Dead Space Two remake would be a no brainer. Yep. I think a lot of like, people thought it would be a no-brainer, right? Yeah, like, why would you remake the first one and not the second? Like, everyone just assumed they would make the second one as well. Now, all EA said was there's no validity to the story. What part of the story? Like, remember, they say what they need to say when they need to say it. Like, and also, like, how? What question were they even asked directly? Was it? Oh, is this this was being worked on and was cancelled? Because what Jeff had, Jeff originally was like they had something that was on wasn't and that was cancelled, but the, his story was essentially they're just they're not doing another Dead Space game. The Dead Space IP is shelved. They are only working on Iron Man and um, the uh, friggin' switch to Battlefield that they're doing now, which uh, sucks. But also like. And then Schreier came out with a very passive-aggressive way of saying Jeff was wrong when it was more. And Jeff said, I didn't want to get too specific because I didn't want to burn a source. It's like you, you, you just get the main story out there, which is they looked at doing Dead Space 2 and they decided to not do Dead Space 2. And you don't try and give like specific time frames or anything like that all the time because you don't want to burn the people who tell you stuff. And in the end, the story is they considered making Dead Space 2 last year and did not. And it sucks. And it wouldn't have been a direct remake of Dead Space 2. It would have been a sequel to the, the Dead Space remake, which had story differences from the original and like stuff added and in. And that's from, fine. Yeah. They thought that's about okay. it. They didn't do it. It sucks. Hopefully they'll go back. Hopefully they'll go back. Yeah, his, his thing was it is shelved. Like that is that is essentially what it is right now. It is shelved because they are so desperate to, and like an incredibly successful single player game for EA is not going to make as much as a mildly successful Battlefield, and that's the annoying thing. Like that's why they decide to do Battlefield over it because a service game, it, a service game is just going to make so much more money over time, and that's what they're worried about. But I thought EA had started to learn that you got to have all of it. They never learn. You've got to have the variety. Forever. Yeah. There's always someone making a boneheaded decision. Somewhere. But also, I think they have shifted to having EA originals like Tales of Kinzera and um, and Immortals of Avian, which didn't work out. Wild Hearts, which did okay, but not great. Like, in the end, their money makers are the microtransactions and the sports games that everyone says they hate, but just. People don't buy single player games enough, especially because there's too many of them. So it's like there's all these great single player games, but also they're all 70 bucks. I can't afford to buy all of them. I don't have the time to play all of them. I'll wait for a sale. That's right. And if you don't buy it when it's new, as we see with Spider-Man, when they needed seven million seventy dollar purchases to break even, it's it's rough. You're not gonna you're not gonna make that money up over time on sales because it's not you're not selling the game. And a bunch of microtransactions. You're just selling the game in those types. So, didn't Magnum? Don't say that, dude. God, I hate seeing that. Don't say <sighs> that. He made a calculated guess. It's not a calculated guess, man. Why do people say that? It's not a calculated guess. Info comes to you. Like, I, again, I don't know how Jeff gets it. I've publicly shown how I get mine. Most of the time you're a reporter, you've got untraceable man. emails, like a Proton email account or something like, uh, and not untraceable, but encrypted emails, more anonymous reporting, people who prove themselves to you enough so that you believe they are employees of that company, that type of thing. Like, that's the focus. It's it's not guesswork. I mean, I mean, there are plenty of people who make yeah. shit up. Most of the time, sometimes it can just be a controlled leak occasionally. But a lot of this stuff is just random people talking. Sometimes from various sources, they may get paid. I have no idea. I doubt Jeff would. I, like, it's, neither Games Beat nor Giant Bomb seem like the type of places that are dependent on this style of reporting. It's just more something where somebody feels no, something needs to come out. And so they make a statement and that's about it. I've been doing this for over four years and I don't make a cent out of it. You have like, a lot of free games you don't play. I, and and the 
like what a lot of people, especially the people that say guess, 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 is you don't realize the amount of stuff that Jeff wouldn't talk about that he just sits on, like like I do as well. I've got videos and screenshots like your of Mario all these Muso games game. that n- may never see the light of day. I've got videos and I'd, that I'd love to leak, that I'd love to just throw them on Twitter of this, say, hey, this studio's making this game. I and I get see... told I'm not allowed to. <clears throat> so I, I did see Tom Henderson talking about, like, I'd love to do, put, throw a podcast together with all the crazy oh, yeah, rumors that. that I've never gone because I've not been able to verify them. And then you and Jez were like, ah. Oh. And I was like, let's just do it. Extreme Rumor Mill Edition. Like, just have you three on with Grub, maybe, mm-hmm. and just talk through all of the absolutely insane rumors. And well, stuff I mentioned the have. Mario Musu one. <clears throat> I was yeah. never going to publicly mention that Mario Musu because I just refused to believe that that Masurio, was a real thing. It was called. And I mentioned it to Jeff, and then Jeff couldn't keep it in. And he told Mike, <laughs> and was it Rebecca? I think it was Rebecca. And then. It put me in a position where I sort of had to half mention something, but that's one I refused. I was never like I had been, I had been told about that Mario Musu ages ago, and I was never going to mention that publicly. And I'm like, well, if it happens, great, but that's not something I'm going to leak publicly because that I don't believe that's real. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, but there's a Zelda one. A Musu makes more sense in the Zelda universe. It seems odd for Mario. Yeah. And here we are now. Nick, how do you uh, risk it? How do you confirm rumors? I'm not a journalist, mate. This is what I, I keep saying this up front and people keep questioning me. I don't confirm them. I've got a handful of people that I trust what they say to me and that's it. That's it. I'm not a journalist, man. This is not my full-time job. I didn't go to journalism school. I don't... Uh, I just ha- I just have a handful of people that i trust that give me stuff man that's it i've said that a thousand times and yet people keep saying oh don't you do this don't you no it, that's why it's called that's why it's called the rumor mill not so the it's reporter called the rumor mill. mill and it's not the reporting corner and it's not the official announcement space it's the rumor mill they're rumors of stuff i hear and yet people get all up in their fucking shit about it and it's they just really it's, upset. it's bizarre behavior. Again, I don't know how everyone else gets their stuff, but I have shown it's just DMs. It's Discord DMs from people that I generally trust. And eventually one of those publishers will sue you and get all your Discord DMs. Cause you keep saying how you get it. <laughs> and then and then release the DMs. And then I'm in big trouble. Well, your yeah. sources are in big trouble. You haven't done anything. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess that's true. <clears throat> but I just, yeah. Like, when I hear people say guess and prediction, God, that fucking pisses me off. It is. You bring it on yourself by having all your goddamn predictions like last year's June showcase show. I do that once in a mm. while. I do that once in a while. Mm. But, like... The part I find odd is if it was guesses and predictions, wouldn't I just do it every week? Just throw all, all the shit. At the yeah, wouldn't I just do it every single week? Like, have you not noticed that the, the timing is like totally random and sporadic? Because it's just whenever I get a green light for something, I just do it. If I don't, if I go two months without a rumor mill, that's because I haven't been told that I can say anything on the rumor mill. Like, it's. If it was just me making shit up for clicks and for attention and for clout, wouldn't I just do it almost daily? Yeah, and you or you are desperate on the show? for attention, so I believe you. Yeah, like I want clout, mm-hmm. so wouldn't I just do it all the time, like <laughs> constantly? It's the just love oh. the clout, mate. We'll get you. We'll get switch you. Switch your fucking brains on. Like just switch your brains on for five minutes when you say yeah. shit. Like seriously, man. It's just. Oh my god! Anyways, yes. Uh, now I am talking a lot. You have been the whole show. <clears throat> you, you, you haven't shut up. It's fine. You're here to talk. I'm just teasing. Okay. I'm just teasing John because he's so tired. It's true. I am very tired. Um. Anyways, what was I going to say? One last uh, thing. Last last piece of news. Uh, PS5 version of Sea of Thieves. 
It's doing no, very, very news. well. This isn't news. I added this. I wanted to add this topic so we could discuss this topic. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't care about how well Sea of Thieves is doing on PS5. Okay, well, I'm going to mention this first. It's it's doing very well in that it, the queues for the beta this weekend were uh, full. So people actually, those those uh, PlayStation only bangers team were, were queuing out the door to play this Microsoft exclusive. And yes, it does have the Xbox Game Studios splash screen. And yes, you do have to link your Microsoft account to your PlayStation account. You had to account with Minecraft, didn't you? In order to play, yeah. I'm just, I'm yeah. just reaffirming. Um, but yes, you're right. This is a curious one that clearly is a stipulation, I would imagine, from the Sony team mm-hmm. to protect the 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 serenity and 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 beauty of the PlayStation multiplayer waters. Uh, which leads there me, a... which leads me to my question: Why is it not an option on Xbox? I don't it understand. Is. Like, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Mm. It is always it, it, it's there a, is it is a you can go at the Xbox level and disable cross network crossplay. Now, the Xbox network yeah, includes it, PC, but you can have it so you will never go and play against PlayStation players in any as, game. As a Sea of Thieves expert, to my knowledge, and bear in mind we haven't had the updated game on Xbox yet, but at current, it allows you to do, uh, I think, input-based matchmaking. You can I. prefer... You can no, prefer... No, you can't just prefer... If I wanted to play on PC Sea of Thieves and I invited my two Xbox buddies... They'd be like, you can't join because you're PC guy and you guys have got yourself set to console console only. So I'd have to go in and go and load it up on console in order to be able to play. No, but on Xbox, the only option you get right now on Xbox is to prefer Xbox players with controller. On PlayStation, you have the option to just not allow cross-play. And we'll see there if There is a menu added. option on PlayStation... Yeah. There is a menu option on PlayStation that says allow crossplay, yes or no. On Xbox, all you have is, do you want to prefer Xbox players with controllers? Well, yes or no. I would imagine it's because that version of the game hasn't been updated yet, and it doesn't include actual crossplay because they consider. But why wasn't the, it there uh, to begin with? Because they don't have crossplay. What? They don't. I'm consi- talking about on Xbox. It's the same network. It's the Xbox network, just either with the PC version or the Xbox version. They consider crossplay networks. You're going to the PlayStation network, the Xbox network. There's not a PC network. Like Steam and the Microsoft Store version use the Xbox backend. It's all the same stuff. So it's not cross network. It is cross play <clears throat> between versions of the game. So once the Xbox version gets updated to match that, I would imagine it will have the disable crossplay option as well. So you're telling me that there's no Xbox only multiplayer games that don't give the option for turning off crossplay? Um I mean it's I only a per game Halo. thing. Halo doesn't let you say you're not gonna play with PC. It, yeah, I'm it's pretty sure Xbox. it does. You can I think you can like it's not it's input based normally, not if they don't consider it cross no, Halo play. They consider it this. It's the same network. There's just different inputs, so it's input based matchmaking. Are you going to make me load up Sea of Thieves on my on my console right now, on my PC, and just check the cross play setting? Because I'm fairly sure yeah. that I I haven't been able to play. I'm talking about on Xbox, this is a problem on Xbox. Yes, yes, but it's, it's same diff. And on Xbox, I play with two console players of Sea of Thieves. And if I load in on PC and they've got their settings set to pad only or, or console only, they're like, you can't join each other yet. I have to turn on my PC and go log on my Xbox to play. And there is a base system setting level on Xbox to disable all crossplay. This is where I'm stunned to find out that Nick has Sea of Thieves installed on his Xbox. I've seen him come online. I don't, on I don't have it installed. <laughs> I don't have it installed. <laughs> I don't have it installed. I've just I've seen a I've seen some stuff on Twitter because Xbox players don't have the option to avoid PC players, which means they don't have the option to avoid cheaters and stuff on PC. Where PlayStation gamers now do. So it's an example of PlayStation getting better treatment from an Xbox first party than Xbox gets. Nope. All right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna load it up. I'm going to load up. So I'm shooting up Halo Infinite because I'm pretty sure Halo Infinite has the option to turn off crossplay. No, it doesn't. Well, I'm with, checking on my Xbox console. 
but it also it doesn't have cross network play. It's all the same network. It's on different platforms, though. If that makes sense. Like Sea of Thieves is now going to be on the PlayStation Network and the Xbox Network. So I'm guessing when the Xbox version gets updated to match the new version on PC, it'll have a turn off <clears throat> crossplay feature. It already has that at the base level of the Xbox UI. When you go into your user settings, you can choose to disable all crossplay. That used to be the only way to turn off cross network play for Battlefield 2042 before they added the option in game. This is riveting audio. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm in the menu on Halo and I'm looking for the options. <laughs> The games like this will normally have the ability to choose your input preferences more than straight as well as like Xbox is our input based normally not network because the Xbox network is console and PC for their games. But like I think Minecraft Dungeons oh, know, everywhere but... and Legends might have had it. I don't remember. But I can understand I can understand someone being careful Aldo disappointed. We don't tell John that he's muted anymore, he gets mad. It's true, you don't. Um, but CCs hasn't been updated yet. Once it's updated, if it doesn't have the option, then it would be a difference. It's just, it's it's not the same version of the game they're beta testing on PlayStation right now. Yeah, I, know. I just, I, I understand the frustration for people that want to Do, avoid PC players. There should be no can't. frustration. Yeah. Um, because it hasn't happened yet. But, like, that is the thing. That that was Halo. People wanted to avoid PC, but you couldn't. It's all considered. Even if you turned off cross-network play, it didn't change it on Halo because it's all the same network. It's all Xbox Live. Even the Microsoft Store and PC. Sea of Thieves. Kevin says Sea of Thieves on Xbox has the option. No, it doesn't. The option it has on Xbox, the option it has on Xbox <laughs> is to prefer pad players. Yep. Prefer Xbox players with controller. Not opt out of. I I'm looking at the menu screen of both. I'm looking at the menu screen of Xbox and I'm looking at the menu screen of PlayStation. The PlayStation version has an actual allow cross play. Yes, no. I'm looking at Because there's it. no cross play yet on the xbox version cross play means That's cross right, networks playstation to xbox i know i know what it means so uh, i know what it means okay. the so point is the, about not being able your, to avoid pc players but you can okay. on the console i know it version. says prefer but it literally PC. is how you, you want when prefer how do you avoid pc players it says the word prefer but it is you will play against people using a controller yeah but that's, that's not avoiding a pc player that's just it's, avoiding a PC the, player with a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, they don't. Well, that's exactly what you would want in yeah. those games. And Xbox has not allowed you to avoid PC players in their games because it's the same network. Anyway, they do well, thrilling. I'm glad you put this in, Nick. It was a thrilling diversion. Um, <laughs> thrilling. <laughs> thrilling. Yeah. Brav. Like, the game anyway. hasn't been updated yet. Let's, let's, you know. You've got to bear in mind, it's, from Xbox's perspective, their game on PC and Xbox is one network. That's what they consider it. So they will allow, and they do allow, you to not be sniped in the head from a CSGO player having fun for the weekend by having input-based matchmaking, which is fine. And, and it does work, as someone who's played thousands of hours of Sea of Thieves. And at like your you base can tell, network settings, you <clears> can avoid <throat> other networks for other games by default. Like you never have to play against yeah. PC and any other game if you just want to turn it off at a system level or third party stuff. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I think it's time for name a game, surely. It's gotta be, Probably. right? It's gotta be time for I name a button. game. Hello and welcome back. It's Name a Game. Oh yeah, I got to do the music. Weekly game show it. where Nick and I will play as champions for our wonderful and brilliant Patreons. Um, every week we pick one of you beautiful, beautiful people uh, to be in with the possibility of winning a game code. 
um, out of Jesse's list of wonderful game codes. If you want to become legend, then you can consider supporting Xbox Era on Patreon by heading to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. Um, Nick, who are we playing for this week? Uh, I am playing for Spartan P451. And you are playing for Bat Out of Hades. Nice. Good name. Damn it, I like it. All right, I got to very quickly fix the scoreboard. It's off from last week because I don't want to pay them money. You know, unless I pay them money, I don't get the, the easy one that always is set up. So I got to do this. There. You're not getting any money what, out of me. Isn't that what the Patreon and stuff is for? Not for this dumb shit. Yeah. Useful things. We've got Bill's mate. <laughs> um, what's the theme this week, Jesse? The theme this week in honor of the Fallout TV show is role-playing games. Role-playing Ugh. games. It's a pretty big category. Like, you know a lot of role-playing games. You don't have to play them to know of them. So... Fair. RPGs. I just went to a top 100 RPG list. So, yes, it's like a whole bunch of different type of role playing games. Number one. Are they going to go in the private chat? Not anymore. Is a stray journey. A stray journey. Astray journey. Two words. A stray journey. I tried to do an easy one to start with. Yeah. Quicksilver in the chat. Living up to his name. He's already got it. John, you know it now. <laughs> <laughs> Strange <laughs> journey. This is one from a Japanese developer that is always mentioned alongside Duh. another. They're not JRPGs or RPGs. This is one, so they can be a JRPG. They're just not always going to be. This one is a JRPG. Always mentioned alongside another one. Nick. Lost Odyssey. Correct. My hint was going to be it's always mentioned alongside another one in reference to Xbox. Lost Which Odyssey I presume is. would have been Blue, Blue Dragon. Dragon. Yes. Yeah. Blue Dragon. All right. One. I've got that dashboard thing, man. God, it looks good. One to nothing for Nicholas. Everything is reset. Things are changed. God, there's so many freaking things to go through and type. God, not easy. To make it look nice, I've given myself too much to do. Oh, shit, this next one's not that long, but it's still way bigger. Resize. The next one. Is Nick going to take a giant lead, or is John going to catch up? It is Buttresses of Perpetuity. <laughs> buttresses of Perpetuity. Oh. Uh, um... Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's one of those stupid name ones. Josh Sawyer. Oh. Oh, no, then I had a different game Sick. in my head. Sorry. I had I had a JRPG eternity. in my head. Incorrect. Correct. That is correct. Oh, you have me going there, bro. <laughs> I had I had a um I had a a JRPG in my head like mm. Infinite Undiscovery or whatever it was and I'm like wait no that's not same it. I was like <laughs> Castles of Fortune like is this something but it's going to be translated uh, to yeah. Japanese but I yeah, went with so you guys should know like, okay. because otherwise you never oh, okay. get it. like it's true story. that's why when he said that's why when he said Josh Sawyer I went oh wait it's not the one I was thinking of hold on a sec tied at one I've just got JRPGs in my head. It's all role playing. It's games, any right? RPG. Isn't any it? RPG okay, it can be. Okay. A, I keep getting JRPG. Isometric. It can be a turn base. It can be a shooter. It can be yep, a yep, first yep. person. I've got to break them. Yeah. I've got to break that thing where I'm just getting JRPGs in my head. Mm -hmm. It could even be an action RPG. I don't know if I put any of those in there, but it could <gasps> be. The next uh, one is Garbage Acres. One word. Garbage Acres. It's one compound word. I, I capitalized the A, but there's only one capital in the actual answer. Garbage Acres. It's very appropriate for this week's... Uh, RPG? Mm -hmm. It is extremely appropriate for this week's thumbnail focus. Uh... Oh, 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 I was about to go Nick. Trashland? 
I was about to say Trashland, and Correct. I'm like, is How did there you get a game trash called Trashland? Trash Wasteland. I was about, I was literally about to say, I'm thinking Trashland. I'm like, what's Trashland? Your first guess and was uh, <laughs> Trashland. So, John, what do you think it is? Uh, oh, whatever, man. Land. Incorrect. Get I lost. That one. Okay. I can't believe you got this, got this right. wrong, Nick. Jesus. Two to one for Nicholas. <laughs> he's got the lead. <laughs> The next one's a little tricky. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to win. He's going to win. He's got that chat window. Oh, you're very tired. No, you're just very tired. Uh, oh, shit. Sorry. I actually oh, he's oh, he's going wrong. It's, wrong. it's, it's, it's three, three for me. It's a free one for John. That's right. He's bust. I lit on my face, but... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. For a potential win or a potential tie, we have preponderance potency. Preponderance Potency. Man. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't stop thinking about JRPGs in my head. Mm-hmm. I'm just this is trying to think a of a Western JRPG that's RPG. like... Western Potence. RPG. It's bar- this one barely works. Uh, I admit it. And no uh, one in chat. I'm going to go that. out on a limb here. John. <sighs> Mass Effect. Correct. Fuck yeah! Mass. <laughs> uh, a preponderance of something is a mass, and the potency something is its effect. Mort got it in chat. That's why John got it. He, John said it. <laughs> no one got it in chat. No, Mort, uh, got, it. Uh, Mort got it in chat, but it was like right after you said it. So it was close. Another second. That's for you, Nick. You can just nudge yourself down onto it, mate. Just the tip. Oh, yeah. this yeah. one's so bad. This one I'm embarrassed by. I love it. I love my own embarrassment. I'm going to put it in chat because it's so fucking long and stupid. Here you go. It is. The intellect. Do you believe in life after love? Two. Killer of rulers. I know what he's trying to do with do you believe in life after love. Feel so um. bad about myself. No, no, no. I know, I know what you're doing there. I just don't know the name of the game. Hmm. This one's actually not too hard. The, the intellect. The intellect. I'm trying to. I'm See, trying to join the second half of that word. Cisco Roke got it already. Because first half. You don't even. You can ignore the second half. The, you can ignore the first half if you just get the Why? stuff after the colon. The stuff after the colon would give it to you if you had any decent taste in video games. Yeah, but the first. Uh. Uh, but the first word. I know what you've done. You've broken up. So the second half of the first word is sure. Oh. Need the whole name. The intellect. The Wit, so The Witcher, The Witcher 2. Fuck, what's the rest of The Witcher 2? Come on, chat, give him the rest. Starting Come the on, because he's stuck without it. Nine. I've never played The eight, Witcher. Seven. I've never played The Witcher. Six, five, four, three. I don't remember the two, rest of The Witcher 2, so it's one. not just The Witcher 2. If you don't get this, John, embarrassed. You better not be looking it up. I see you typing. Hmm? I don't know what the rest it, of the, I don't you know the it, subtitle you, of you The Witcher 2. Uh, The Witcher 2, Assassin of Kings? Damn it, he got it. Correct. Oh, is that what the, is that what the subtitle is? Yeah, like killer is? Of, Killers of Rulers, I thought, just gave it away. But come on, that the intellect, no. do you believe in the I was focused on was, sure. I was, was focused good. on sure. I'm mm-hmm. like, sure, sure. Why is he saying the second half is sure? How else can you do Witcher? But all yeah. right. That was good. A win. It was fun. For the very tired one, handed to him by Nick. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. It's always very dangerous charity. taking a guess if you don't know the whole thing. Yeah, no, I, I just I got because I got excited at the fact that I figured out the Witcher. <laughs> I could see it in your eyes, like, and then oh. I didn't know the. 
And you're like, oh. I, I, I actually own The Witcher 2 because it was games with gold. Mm-hmm. So, so so do I. And, and full of mission. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's The Witcher 2. So I just clicked my GOG library. <laughs> I was like, this is Assassin's Creed. Wow. Taking the oh, point what? away. So he just admitted <laughs> to cheating. He admitted he cheated. So. Just, I just opened uh, opened my app. I was like, oh, there he it is. He did admit it. The Witcher so 2. We're back on. Tied it 2. No, we're fucking, no, Next. fuck that. Then you don't oh, yeah, let's shit. go. Let's go. Yep. The next one for the potential win is one compound word. That word being... I thought I was smart figuring quenched. out the wisha. Crumble quenched. One word. One word? Mm-hmm. Crumble quenched. Crumble quenched. Quenched. Crumble quenched is a compound word. Very I think popular. think of another word for quenched. Mm-hmm. What could you call something that is quenched? What could you call something that is yeah, crumbled? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I can't think of anything for quenched. I know what quenched means. That's one word. Yep. I'm going to start a timer up. Crumble quenched. Timer's going. If you quench someone's thirst... They're, they're satisfied? Three. They're satiated? Yeah, yeah. satiated. One. I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah, what about if you've quenched a, if you've quenched a fire? What is something uh, done when it's crumbled? <laughs> Fall. I still, I still don't get what... Fall. You, fall oh, out? Oh, what? Fall out? Mm-hmm. Fall oh, out? Man. Yep. Again, oh, it's wow. another one. You can, oh, take, you can take it up God. with Merriam-Webster. Quenched is a synonym for out. Something is quenched. Oh, it is my. out. And I'm th- in my head, I'm like, what game has, like, satiated or whatever is the second word? <laughs> Like, what? Oh, yes. Wow, yeah. I can't believe we missed that one. Mm-hmm. Again, get, a- get upset in English. That's the way it works. Kevin in chat knew. He's like, it's Fallout. After I already said it. Wow. For, wow. once again, the potential win. Two words, those words being gloomy spirits. <sighs> gloomy spirits. Sick of Mechanico. Dark Souls. Correct. Mm. Damn it. Hate it when he wins. I just opened up my Xbox Live library. And they just did give that, that one away with Games of Gold too. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, quick they start did. again. They did yeah. give it away Games of Gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, uh, I forgot I did James. this one. This one's so bad, I don't even want to say it. <laughs> okay. I have to completely change how everything looks so this can fit. Oh my, why is this so big? Oh, the last thing was one word, that's why. Because you did it. No, the last thing was one word, that's why this is so big, because it's like 12 or 13. All right. What are you doing to us? I'm doing this. 20, okay, first word is- Oh my God. 24 hours, sappy show that starts with this is. Total word for that first word is four letters. And then the next thing is, John has a crazy one of these. I forgot to put a crazy one. Two letters. <laughs> it's a six letter I, word. I, I, right, I, so I, 24 hours, 24 hours, sappy show that starts with this is. And that's four letters total for all those words. But there's... The first 24 hours is the first. Four letters or four words? Four letters. letters. The 24 hours, two letters. Show that starts with this is, two more letters. And then John has a crazy one of these, two more letters. Six letters total. Mort and Chad got it. Woo. What is it? I got it. I buzzed ages ago. Hello. Yeah. Deus Ex. Correct. Nice. It's not bad. It's just stupid. And John has more than one of these. I don't know if they Ex- both were. Ex-wives. Yeah. Yeah, this would be crazy. Yeah. John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. Because this is us. This is us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I don't would... know what the 24 hours sappy show. No, 24 hours is oh. one day. D-E, day. Oh. Then sappy show right, that starts day, day, with day. this is... Us, day us. Right. Obviously, right. DE okay. for day. Yep, 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 yep. I didn't say it's smart or good, I just said it works. 
Yeah. I know it's stupid. That's why I like it. That's how I am. The next I only one... got it. I only got it because of John has one of these. Yep. For fun, the part that gave it to me. Planet Fair. of For conflict funsies. creation. <laughs> Two, three words total. Planet uh. of conflict creation. Nick. World of Warcraft. Correct. Yeah, it's a nice easy one. You can't say yeah. You didn't get it. Yeah, I've already won. I'm not. I've, I'm already back to sleep now. <laughs> internally, in my brain. I'm, not, I'm right. out. <laughs> Final one is. I hope it's a ridiculous one. Come on, be ridiculous. Yeah, it's not great. This is the oh. worst time to try and get my attention. What can I do for you? No, I'm hosting a game show. Can you? <laughs> he wants to do something in the kitchen and mute, have me mute my mic. And be hard to host a show if I'm muted. The final one That's is true. incredibly long. Those words are all, of course, the Senior Tubes 5 Atmosphere hyphen Tongue in a Butt. Tongue <laughs> in a butt. Mm -hmm. And butt only has one T. Is that a deliberate no. misspelling of butt? No. Not oh. deliberate. No. But, butthole. Oh, Nick I did it again. I did it again. Where I know the first part and don't know the subtitle, the Elder Scrolls V. How do you not know the subtitle to the Elder Scrolls V? Which one's Elder Scrolls V? Which one is no, it? Time is up. Time's up. Oh, no. Atmosphere. Skyrim. Yeah. Doesn't count. I mean, yeah, tongue in a butt. Anyways. Rim. Yeah. Skyrim. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. The skin... well, I've never played game. Skyrim. Yeah, but you've uh... heard of it a bajillion times. You Come on. Yes, Again, I know. It doesn't I've matter if you it. played it. It matters if you've heard of it. Yep, 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 yep. I got them all after he had already lost. Fucking hell. He gave up. He's very tired. <laughs> now I'm going to uh, go look at all Jesus. the settings and see if thieves. Ow. Just oh my knee. god. Okay. Oh, there you go. Congratulations well, congratulations to Bat Out of Hades. Uh, Bat Out of Hades. If you reach out to Jesse on the Discord or in our forums, and he will present to you a list of games from which you can pick a code. Most of the time, I just send go one and have now. some fun. I just no, send them okay. one. That's you send them the a good one. Because whenever yeah. I send a list, people get overwhelmed. <laughs> There's so many. Because well, um, you got to look them all up because you don't know what they are. Yeah. Speaking of uh, so many, uh, our wonderful patrons make all of this possible. You, no one um, believes you. you. We know you hate them. I, I was told. And, and as much as I dislike every one of them um, <laughs> from the bottom of my heart, I have to thank them at the same time for, for making Xbox Zero possible. Kills you inside. Um, and, it, and it's worth mentioning, like, if you like free game codes and giveaways and fun okay, community sure. Interactions, you should probably be a part of the Discord or our forums where Jesse's regularly a Father Christmas like figure handing out gifts from his big sack of game codes. Um, but anyway, if you if you love Xbox Era and you enjoy what we produce and all the content from headlines to the podcast to let's plays to reviews and previews and everything me. else, we didn't do a movie podcast last month. Yeah, I know. We were waiting for you to watch June 1 and 2. I'm looking forward to the discussion. Support us on patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. June, episode. June 1 and 2. Let's go. Jesse, love it. No yeah, way. great discussion. No way. You made us watch for half the the seven one. horrible movies so far. Yeah, I was asleep for half of films. the second movie. I slept through it. No, Your movie we'll choices were so bad I've stopped watching them. No, we'll do something else. We need to do one. We're halfway through April now. We need to do a movie episode for April. Yeah, I can do one this week. I mean, it's no problem. Happy to do it. Um, yeah. what movie? Do we, hey, do we, we should start. Actually, we should start asking the patrons what they that's want. Exactly us to watch. what I was going to say. Like, let's yeah. ask the patrons what they want us to. Well, to we see. had an idea. But then they might ask you to go to the movies. We had an idea. Yeah, well, that's um, not always possible. With Parsec and the way everything is going, or StreamYard, like I can do Parsec to two people at once, or they can do, you know, you can you can multi Parsec. Um, we could do movie commentaries. We could watch a movie together, shoot the <laughs> shit during it, and put that up as an MP3 for our patrons. I'm down uh, with patrons. that. I'm down with that. Two, let's make, three, we, let's make yeah. <laughs> chat. Let's make Nick watch June the 1984 David Lynch version. Like just for lulls, because he's seen one and two now, and it's the same movie condensed down into one film from the eighties. Brilliant! 
Let's go. I actually like that comment from Hugh. Rumor has it John was on the beach today screaming at the ocean how much he hates Patreon. I hate Patreon. It's actually <laughs> true. I was throwing rocks. I like that. Fucking skedaddle. Like <laughs> Grabbing hand, yeah. handfuls of sand and just throwing them at no, the water. No, I was punching it. It's cutting my knuckles on. Fucking Patreon. Big puppy senpai. I have seen Anaconda with Jennifer Lopez and Ice Cube. Classic movie. Horrendously bad. Terrible. One John, of the worst John things I've Voight's ever performance seen. is exemplary. <laughs> John Voight, man. What are you the video that I'm from the jungle? Huh? Uh, I'm French, <laughs> but not quite French. Like, and it's funny you mention <gasps> Anaconda because a, a few weeks back I was walking to the gym, and when I walked to the gym, it's a 2.5 kilometer walk. So sometimes I listen to How Did This Get Made, and I happen hmm. to listen to the Anaconda episode of How Did This Get Made. Man, it's very funny. <laughs> Where they just um, break down Anaconda. It's hilarious. I would love to do that as a as a sick and Nick Flicks special. Let's like record an episode where, where people can come and, and watch along with us. Well, if we're gonna right, be realistic the movie that we're watching. If we're gonna be realistic. It's always hard for Nick because it's not his full time job and he doesn't get paid. So we wouldn't That's probably true. brand it sick and Nick Flicks because John and I would be able to do it a lot more often. So we have to come up with a name for it and we can make it an MP3 that people can sync up. Um, potentially, if we're making money off of it, we can't really do it on like Discord or anything. Companies get mad if you're making money. Um, but we'll yeah. see. At the very least, I would I would like to get it set up where we can just shoot the shit watching a movie, post the MP3, like, hey, we're gonna start recording here, so sync it up when this Madam Web. By. <laughs> yeah, no, I want to. I'd, I'd like to watch something good. Well, the the, the fun okay. thing would be to Iron watch Claw? a mix, a mix of good and bad. You seen Iron Claw? Iron Claw is very good. Uh, no? Uh, I don't even know what I... Oh, yeah, the the wrestling one. Yeah. The, the yeah, wrestling, the wrestling one. one. That's a good film. Don't, and the Von Erich Oh, The Longest Yard, man. Ooh. I'd love to watch The Longest Yard again. The Longest Yard's a classic. Uh, oh, I watched Role Play. I watched Role Play with Kaylee Cuoco, the incredibly beautiful Kaylee Cuoco. See, this is why I was suggesting that occasionally without Nick John, because then we can watch good stuff. It's true. It's true. I mean, you know. I watched Spaceman with Adam Sandler. Fuck, that was shit. I can't stand Adam Sandler. <laughs> can't stand him. Wouldn't even I love Adam Sandler. Oh, of course you do. Oh, I love Adam Sandler, yeah. but I hate Spaceman. That Spaceman movie was so bad. But I love Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler's great. Is Adam Sandler you one didn't of our like patrons? Iron Claw? Because that's wow, why I so much. didn't like Iron Claw. Iron Claw was great. I think if you know the Von I Eric's even didn't story mind more. Argyle. Oh god. Yeah. Everyone, everyone shit on Argyle. I didn't mind Argyle. I terrible. Thought it was okay. I thought it was well, okay. no, terrible is about ter- mediocre. A letdown. So, I said the, okay. Yeah. I said it was okay compared to the first king, the first and even the second Kingsman. The, the last couple Kingsman things have not. Kingsman related adjacent things have not hit for me. The King's Man yeah. and Argyle was just been like nah. I liked the King's Man mostly. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it was I didn't know it was Kingsman adjacent until the end credits. I was like, holy shit, it's set in the Kingsman he's universe. Making the That's King's so universe. cool. I'm okay with that. Those first two Kingsman movies were fantastic. They were great. I like Taj. Taj Edgerton or whatever his name is is good. Especially if you like some pureed um, Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Always fun. Is he in that? He's in the second yeah. one. He's the, it turns out the, it's been a long time. He turns out to be the bad guy and they end up dropping him in the giant meat grinder. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wow. Imagine if we got to our first of so uh, 14 community questions, or 13 community questions. Let's go. Yeah. John's we need to, to do Stardust. We need to do Stardust at some stage. Happily. Oh, Stardust. What a film. Okay. Community questions. Hi, <sighs> MG. The Fallout TV series is cool, I'll say, but I will say I do like Fallout 3 and New Vegas, but Fallout 4 is good, but I didn't like how bulky and different the power armor is in Fallout 4 along with 76, but otherwise the franchise is cool. P.S. What was your gents' first Bethesda game you guys played for me? It's Fallout 3 and New Vegas, but what is your first Bethesda game anyway? I've never played a Bethesda game. 
I've I've played everything from Morrowind onwards, but I've never played it as in I've really like got stuck in. Like I've loaded it up, I've gone ah, this isn't for me, and got bored. So the first game I actually really, really, really enjoyed from Bethesda was Starfield. Ah, the giant disappointment. <clears throat> Yes, the 7 out of 10 mixed reviewed Starfield. My first one Thank was... Thank Doom Count? No. Bethesda Game Studios, not Bethesda Publisher. Um, yeah, well, I've never played one then. I think mine was Arena. I think that's about as old as you can get. So. Wow. I, 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 back when Fallout 76 was in beta or whatever, I played Fallout 76 for five minutes. The game glitched on me and I got stuck somewhere and I nev- I uninstalled it. I was like, nope, not for me. Sorry. Yep. Starfield okay. is definitely not their worst single player game, but to each their own. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Anorexic. Hello to three remaining survivors of Vault 117. Oh. Hey. Let's say there's an alternate universe where Microsoft didn't have any leaks pertaining to their multi-platform ambitions, where John didn't have any contacts and the various other insiders didn't hear anything about any multi-platform plans and the Russians didn't hack Microsoft exec emails. How do you think Xbox was planning to originally announce these four these four games hitting other platforms? With games coming out before June, it couldn't have been during the June showcase. Were they planning a business update all along? That would have blindsided all of their fans in what was supposed to be the best year of Xbox. Something tells me that the way things panned out was probably for the best. Didn't they say that they had always planned on doing the business update? Is that yeah, what they there said? Was a, there was there was always a plan to do a, an update to the to everybody. Um, it's just that I think it came a little bit sooner than they had in mind. But I wonder if that business update was only planned because of the original rumours starting in December. Possibly. Don't know on that front. Just know I, I do wonder update. if the original, original, original plan was for these games to just drop and that's it. Would have been an interesting approach. Mm. But well, yeah. you don't have time for people to fucking spend weeks losing their shit. That's true. That's true. It would just be like surprise, surprise. And then you'd see the fallout. <laughs> Watching the fallout. Yeah, Ba-dum-ts. Ba-dum-ts. no pun intended. Yeah, I, I suspect that the original plan was just to drop them and be like, "There you go." Yeah. Omen. A few weeks ago. I was asked the question on whether I was crazy for thinking Xbox might make the next Xbox as a hybrid device capable of running Windows and run Xbox games natively. And y'all said I was crazy. I don't remember calling you crazy. I just said I think it should be a native one. However, now Tom Warren is saying they are pursuing a hybrid approach. So what do you think about the hybrid approach? If true, do you think that's the right move? If they pull it off, I mean, we talked about this earlier. If, if they pull it off in the right way, I think it could be cool. But the execution has to be spot on Good. for it yeah. to work. Yeah. Because they could easily screw this up too. Very easily. So they've got to get it right in how they execute it. Mm. I, I, great yeah, I, I, I think it's I think it's a very, very cool way to completely upend all of the nonsense and just don't care truck forward um it is gonna come at the cost of 30 years of tribalism to a degree and that's going to be an interesting thing for microsoft to navigate and they've got to get there and this is this is a big problem for them you know microsoft Mm. if you're listening got to get that messaging bang on got to nail that from from Start to finish with no wishy washiness or vagary. Um, good luck. Uh, but mm. yeah, I you know I, I speak about it a little bit in the in the opinion piece I did a, a week or so ago, um, to which I've had some very positive feedback in terms of how I framed that. So you know, will be, take that as you will. It will be curious to see what their actual messaging is because I know a lot of people say they've had bad wishy washy. It's like, no, they haven't had anything. What they've had are leaks. <laughs> they haven't said anything yet. Yeah, it's had, all you. <laughs> their issue has been leaks. 
but yeah. the messaging has been bad because they haven't been able to do it themselves. It, it they yeah. might get it wrong. It might be bad when they do, but we don't. We didn't get to know because they mostly, I would imagine, from those hacked emails, never got to do it themselves to start with. The, the funny thing about Microsoft and bad messaging is they're they're always labeled with that, right? And but you're absolutely right. Here's an example of Microsoft with bad messaging: the Xbox One launch. That was a genuine flubbed yes. message out to the audience right and that is on microsoft but all of the other examples are everybody running around with bits and pieces of information and then going mental at them and then when they set the record straight often after the fact that's bad messaging and it's like well it's not really on them <laughs> like no. you can't be mad at them um should they maybe get out a little bit sooner in front of some of this stuff or, when it's bubbling away for three price. months Double the yeah. gold price is another one. Bad message. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. I think it's a yes, great moment. Looking forward to it. Yes, Omen. If if they execute, I still firmly believe just make a straight up Xbox handheld. I'm not going to, a uh, native handheld. I'm not going to ever back down from that. This could work if they get it right. Yeah, because uh, this is an extra. If they get it right. As long as it's still native. This is extra. Yes. So, like other people, are like I'll oh, just make a really good Windows one. It's like, no, there's already a bunch no. of those. But if you're That's gonna right. have, if you're gonna have a really good Windows handheld, that also is a very good Xbox handheld. Awesome. Then yes, it's just better. Great. Yeah. Because then you capture everyone. You capture the people that just want the Xbox handheld. But then you get your home brewers and your and your guys that like to tinker and muck around and this and, and all that of and us who uh, right redeem every epic game and have like a 350 game strong yeah. library without sending a penny yeah it'd be cool if i had my xbox handheld and then i could just i guess dual boot it i don't know into windows mode to play a game that i attached on the epic store that i don't really want to buy on xbox but i can still play it on this handheld that'd be awesome be cool as let's see if they pull it off if the rumor is true Eep. Then you emulate your Switch and you have Bellatro on the go. Or just buy it on Steam. But I've got it on Xbox. Oh, yeah. Well, that too. I was, I, so again, I had the freaking Windows anyway. thing stuck in my head. But yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Jesse Brother. Happy 207, Bellers. I apologize for not having any questions for Abubakar last week. I'm just not a fan of any of the Assassin's Creed games and hate when people act phony, so I didn't want to be a hypocrite. Only during the show, I realized he's involved in making Tales of Kinsera, a game I'm quite looking forward to, but was too dumb to include it, thanks partly to your understandably rushed time frame. Anyways, now that I've played Control and I'm currently replaying Alan Wake 2, that part in the Ocean View Hotel where Jesse Faden appears makes so much more sense now. Speaking of Alan Wake 2, everyone should make sure they keep a save slot just for the just uh, save slot for just before the We Sing part. I know the game now allows chapter select, but sadly that part isn't really one of them. Or at least it takes a bit longer to get there after initiation four starts. My question this week is for John. Did you ever actually play that part of Alan Wake 2? If the answer is no, you can Brexit the podcast right now and finish playing that brilliant game which should have been game of the year over stupid Baldur's Gate 3. Sorry, Mort. I know you love Baldur's Gate 3 almost as much as you love my brother's cats. But like I said, I can't be phony or a hypocrite. So tough shit, you silly little Swede. <laughs> yeah, Alan Wake uh, 2 was game of the year. I, I I haven't finished it because Alan Wake 2 was determined for me to not continue. It just kept giving me, oh, you can't get in the car right now. And I'll be like, I'll reload the game and I'll replay the whole section Should again. Should have played it on Xbox. PC gaming, PC broken. gaming, isn't it? So, PC yeah, Alan Wake 2 didn't broken. want me to play it. Oh, I've just kind of you, given up. It's still installed somewhere, so. but... If you, if you just go into the, the INI file and then you extract the isotopes out of the thing and then you install these drivers... you got a radioactive you computer, you are a fudge. And just... PC gaming is shit. I hate it. Boy, I Mac. It. Just that's right. It just works. By the way, <laughs> if you uh, if you're a member of the Xbox Air channel, you have three new emotes to use. Thanks, courtesy of Predrag. They're my my two oh, cats yeah. and my dog. Okay, Hebs. 
Hello, everyone. I'm only a couple of episodes into the Fallout TV show, and my God, they are crushing it. I can't wait to get back to Wasteland with the Fallout 4 update in a couple of weeks. My question this week ties into something Nick said a few episodes back. Over the past couple of weeks, we have seen reports from Tom Warren and others talk about Xbox pushing updates and overall quality of life things. Do you think we hear about the Achievement 2.0 update officially this June at the showcase, or do you think they will save it for the next-gen release with the potential UI update as a whole? As always, great job, and John, stop hating the Patreon supporters, lol. Hebs. Can't help it, they're jerks. I, I, would, I would not be surprised if, like, that achievement overhauls, like, on hold. Even, even um, Maka said it, how many times they've been like, oh, we're going to do an achievement overhaul, and then it either gets on hold or it gets cancelled or whatever. Uh, I haven't heard anything new on that, and whether it's still happening, when it's happening, if it's happening... I don't know. I hope so, because I still think they need it. But yeah, wouldn't surprise me if it's do. yeah. I know. Don't know. It's Microsoft, man. It wouldn't surprise me if it's either on hold or cancelled. It's Microsoft. It's a Chinatown joke. It's like the family plan. They were gonna do a family plan. Now they're not doing a family plan because third parties Gone. complained. The people yeah. who they have the deals with for Game Pass, they said that. Like Phil, straight up said their partners weren't happy with them offering such a ridiculously cheap way to get access to all of those games. For multiple people. Yeah. Because the Game Pass family plan was an insane deal. And then that's that many people getting all of those third party games as well. But the third parties aren't making like a bunch more off of it. It wasn't, it wasn't financially incentivized enough for their partners. God, so what would have happened with the original Xbox One plan? Where it was like family sharing with like 10 yeah, people. Because you can only play, only of... one person could play a game at a time. I think that was the, the logic. That's how Steam family sharing works now. You can have 10 people have access to a game, but only one of them can play it. And for all sharing, like you can just share one game at a time. The other person can't be playing. The new Steam family share is you have one license that can be shared between six people for every game and anyone can play any of those one licenses at a time but if you want two people to play the same game you need two licenses between the accounts which i think is a very nice version of family sharing yeah but like i i understand third parties being upset at that but how many people realistically are gonna truly truly exploit that it doesn't take a ton like even now they're, they're already so even tight now, on margins yeah, but we, we, why haven't we seen the, the console sharing we do now blocked if it's such a problem? Because there's no other way to make it work. I'm sure if they could. So it is more restrictive now than it used to be because you used to get a PC, an Xbox, and a shared Xbox, and now you only get the two. They did take away the extra PC one because you used to be able to play a game three times with one. Like, I could get it to work pretty easy, especially if you set a PC as your offline PC. And then that person mm. could just use it offline and play all the shit. But now they are what much more restrictive, and it'll say, "This account is playing this game here. Do you want to kick them off?" Like it didn't used to do that. It just let you play three copies on one purchase. So they have mm -hmm. narrowed it how they can. But with these things either being online or offline, and most things being digital, it's pretty much the only way it can work is to give you the main and share license because it has to work offline for something. That's just a default part of the license. If they could get rid of that, I'm sure they would, but they can't. There you go. I've thought about it a lot. Very Voodoo lonely. people. Hello, folks. Critically speaking, I thought 2023 was actually a really strong year for First Party, colored somewhat by the fact that their two weaker games were really high profile in Redfall and COD. I think part of why 2024 could be better received critically is that more of the output will be mainstream games. Big license IP and over-the-shoulder type gubbins. <laughs> you think 2024 will be received better, worse, or about the same as last year? Will the dreaded tax that shall not speak its name raise its head? Yes, it will. Uh, it and will raise its head. For them, <laughs> I'm curious how much it matters because I think the main thing people always forget is it's not... Critical acclaim doesn't matter if the thing sells, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 still made a bajillion dollars. 
um, and is yep. more popular now than it was then. Like, it is always this thing where the way we and in the industry, who, the people who cover it, look at success is very different than what the people in the industry actually care about. Like, the people making games really care about critics and scores, especially if it's tied to bonuses, but it also just feels nice. But on the whole, they made a bunch of money last year. I yeah. bet you they make a bunch again this year, so... I, I'm sure Microsoft would love to win a Keeley. Like, they would love to win a, a, a full-on game of the year at the Keeley. And, and right? they've got a game for it this year. They've got a game for it they've this year. They've got a game for it this right? year. It ticks all the so, Keeley Sony boxes. Got, mm, you watch Stellar Blade swoop in. Yep. <laughs> But yep. of the year, Stellar, Stellar Blade, Blade will will be right there, and Hellblade, mate. Two blades head to head. One Stellar, one's from Hell. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, it, it ticks know, all the it boxes, be, doesn't it? it? Is, is Nintendo releasing anything this year? I mean, it's Microsoft's year, surely. Now, if nah. Nintendo aren't releasing anything, because Final you know, Fantasy VII Rebirth, Stellar oh, Blade. Oh, that's it. That's gonna win it. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has got it in the bag. Even yep. It's a 93 on Open Critic, even though a lot of people are like, yeah, this isn't a very good open world. Like, you, I read so many of those yeah. reviews, and I don't... The text Yay, doesn't my nostalgia, 10 out of 10. Yeah, the, the text <laughs> doesn't back up the score so often. And that's, that's I don't care about scores, but your text should back up what you say. Like, I wrote 3,500 words to back up why I enjoyed Redfall. I wrote 5,000 words on why I like Starfield. And people didn't read them. They just looked at the score. Same thing with Armored Core. I wrote a very long review about why it didn't hit with me, and people don't pay attention to that. They just score is what they look at, and that'll yeah. be put, that'll be pointed at by a lot of people who vote on these things. I'm curious if Hellblade will even get nominated. <laughs> no, I, I'm not even certain it'll get nominated. The first game was what, like the an 82. I wouldn't be surprised Outlaws. if this one's close to it. Outlaws, Ubisoft could win it with some Star Wars no. nostalgia. No, they hate Ubisoft. I would nope. not uh, they be surprised, hate man. Ubisoft hate them. Oh, okay. They have no chance. Wow, then. I would not be surprised if Hellblade doesn't even get nominated. And then I want to hear the reason. Ticks all the <laughs> it's boxes. It's going to be an entertaining Third person yeah. over the shoulder, story driven, cinematics, great graphics. I don't Scott think Stellar Blade boxes. has a chance. I think Helldivers. Uh, well, no, it was Helldivers. Hell yeah. Helldivers will be the one that, that really gets pushed alongside. Oh, Final yeah, Fantasy. there you go. Helldivers. See, even though Final, you know, Helldivers PlayStation is exclusives to get 80, nominated. This it's year. only an 82, but that doesn't stop their games from ever that doesn't getting stop nominated. It. So, yeah. That's no chance, fun. Nate Dog. No chance, Nate Dog. Nate Dog goes, Hellblade is definitely in the running. It will be a 90 meta. Mm -mm. Hellblade, <laughs> a 90 meta. You are dreaming, my friend. Not enough you game are here. Dreaming. 30 frames, black bars. 81. Well, that was next review. He's just pretending it was someone else. You are dreaming, mate, if you think Hellblade's going to be a 90. Anywhere near 90. It's not going to be within spitting distance of 90. I mean, Halo was an 87, no and people treat it like it was a tire fire the entire time. Like, it doesn't matter. That's a different thing, though. That's yeah. a different thing altogether. Well, it's like Starfield. Starfield okay. was an 88 until the late reviews came in and gave it a bunch of 3s and 4s and 5s and knocked it down to an 83. All the people that didn't get I reckon review code. That can't be true because it was bolstered by a bunch of Xbox branded websites. Yes, true. Even though most with of all us the waiting, Jesse, yeah. with Who, all the waiting, or just zero waiting when we're not a top critic, people yell at me yeah. that that I my score was one of the main reasons it was not in the seventies. I'm like, I don't affect either thing. Like, we don't we're not a top critic, so we don't affect the score on Open Critic at all, and we are extremely low waiting on open critic and i know or uh, metacritic and i know that because i've had a review before anyone else and then one other review came up and it was ign and i had something at like a seven and then ign gave it a nine and it was an 88 like that's how much higher their weighting was than than ours yeah man and it was an 89 like our weighting is nothing we we do not affect scores most of the sites don't it's all hidden. hurricane hellblade 2 will land at like 82, same as the old one. I reckon, uh, I reckon the tax will come hard. 78. <laughs> yeah, I could see high 70s. I could see high 70s. I'm going to say 88. 30 frames. 30 frames already has them in that frame of mind now. <laughs> yeah. ah, I see what you did there at 30. 30 FPS. frames already has them there. 
Like that's they're going in now with the negativity slant already. Ugh, thirty frames. Got to play Redfall. We should play. We got to play more Redfall, John. I don't know when. Yeah. I'm friggin. I got a lot of games to review, but uh, I can get a stream in or two. This we'll week. find some time. Okay. Next. Ten k. Good evening to John, Jesse, and that loser who games on a Mac. I didn't say I play games on it. Have you ever? <laughs> Uh, I played that Sonic game that's on Apple Arcade. There you go. I played that on it. That's not bad. Uh, what else did I play on it? A couple of games. Ninja Turtles. So you do game on a Mac? Yep. Let's play a game. Each one of you has to pick one game you really like. Don't proceed on to the next step until you do. Video game F Mario. Okay. Okay. Rocket League. Uh, that's a game I really like. Really like, really like Bellatro. Come on, let's go with something. Yeah, Bellatro, Rocket League, whatever. Okay, you got Rocket League. I've got Bellatro. Jesse, one game I really like, um, Starfield. Okay, boom. Okay, after each of you has picked the game, you need to play the game. Play, keep, delete. Play means you can play it only once. Keep means you can keep playing it forget forever. And delete means it's wiped from existence. Oh, that's easy. That's right. easy. Play, play, play Starfield, keep Bellatro, play it, delete Rocket League. Done. Mm-hmm. Play it. Play it once. Play Bellatro, keep Rocket League, and delete Starfield. <laughs> well, Starfield is... <laughs> Jesse. Well, that's easy. You would play Starfield once because it's very long, and you can literally just play it forever. You don't have to. You don't have to let the credits roll, and it's you've only played one playthrough. Bellatro, you keep playing because it is short, constant runs. And as much as I have liked Rocket League, I would delete it because of its truly repugnant uh, community. I could play Rocket League forever. Yeah, so ever and yeah. ever. But playing Bellatro once is pointless. Yeah, I know. One hand of Bellatro is like ten. But I don't want to. But I don't want to play Starfield once. But you would and have I it play there. Starfield once. It would be there. <laughs> What's the point of having Bellatro to play once? You could just get rid of Bellatro. Go. Yeah, be could, I don't want to. I don't want to delete it. I don't want to wipe it from existence. But you never get to play it. That's the the mental exercise here. You never get to play it ever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm. Good question, Tenkei. Thank you for the game. (laughs) Hugh. Heidi, hi, gents. As one of the latest trends appears to be adapting video games into TV shows, I wondered which TV show would you like to be adapted into a game? Instead, and oh, not shit. Friends. I was about Friends to be like, Mass has Effect, a game. but it's the other way around. Friends uh, already has a game on PS2. I'm sure it's great. TV show adapted into a, TV a game. TV show into a game. Well, also the games have become movies, so I think a movie or a TV show into a game. TV mm, show into Monkey a Man. Game. Um... Back to the Future. They had one. They had multiple. What type of yeah, genre like for it, though? Like a really open-ended like RPG. Ray Donovan? Ray good Donovan choice. could be a good game. Well, don't we have games like Mafia and stuff like that? Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a reason yeah, you yeah. can have a Ray Donovan yeah, game. Yeah. Um, Mystery in Between. I want what? the I want the room. It's an Australian show. The room with Tommy Wiseau, oh, but the yeah. version he wanted to do, where he was a vampire with a flying car. <laughs> that was the ending he wanted. What they about the about bear? There's cooking video uh, games. God, that would that would be bear. So. Oh, How RPG do you want to die of game. Like, it would be a roguelike. Yeah. It would be the day of doing cooking. <laughs> and, yeah. Just fuck. It'd be like half RPG, half Man. cooking game. There's so much. There's so much to look forward to this year. We've got the Bear season three. We've got the Boys season four. Oh, I might yeah, get that they're early. all coming at the same time. I just finished watching Invincible. Yeah, I haven't watched two. season two yet. I haven't watched it. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I'll, I'll get around to it. Good. Okay. Oh yeah, the Boys video game. Holy shit! That would like be an right. ultra violent. Ultra superhero. Oh, right, oh, superhero. Yeah, God, okay, done. yeah. Sold. How, did the, how Sold. the fuck did we not think of that? Sold. 
There you go. That's oh, the answer. Oh, yeah, Brit. That's a good idea. The boys. Holy shit. That'd be so good as a video game. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Miss Marvel. Oh, wait. Well, she was that one. You could have, you could have a lot of different ones, yeah, but the boys yeah. would be different from a lot of the uh, superheroes. Yeah, that we've the boys would fuck. be cool. And, and That'd be cool. have the people who write the TV show do it because it is so much better written than the comic was. I, I, I actively, I went and, when I knew they were going to do a TV show, I went and went through the whole boys comic series and the TV show was way better. <laughs> like the, okay. I hate every character in the comic book. They're all, they all suck. They're all terrible, horrible people. Okay. They're all a bunch of nicks. All right, next question. Skedaddle. Everyone give John a round of applause for the two hours he spent alien, alien Isolation. Let the people know about your experience. Also, when can we expect episode two of this community challenge? Right now. Let's go. I'm going to flip over to he- Hangouts. Uh, no. No. Uh, I'll try and do episode two at some point this week. I'll be honest, though, Skedaddle. I like... like I know that after a couple more goes, the fear will no longer be really an issue, right? Like, it's yeah, it might occasionally have a jump scare or whatever, but the the what I consider to be mostly archaic uh, game design is what really was making me spit feathers during that playthrough. Um, that's going to be a tough ask, and it's like fifteen hours of it. I'm just like, ugh. But anyway, we'll, we'll get around to it. Yeah, it's it's 12, 12 to 15 hours, apparently. Knowing they probably like 20 more. hours of slogging through that game. Okay. Anyway, thank you, though. Skedaddle, you jerk. <laughs> Good old Collingwood. The Muppies. Hi, John and hi John and Jesse. Bye, Nick. Now, I asked God, God old Collingwood why buy, and it's because Collingwood has a buy this week. <laughs> <laughs> so... Jeff Grubb got hauled over the coals over his leak about Dead Space 2 this week. I think it's the first time I've seen someone as respected as Grubb be challenged for a leak. And leaks are intangible. They don't have to come true. Yet, we hang on to them like a mountaineer hangs on to a climbing cord. Without the cord, we're lost. Yet, we hang on to them. Oh, shit. Without the promise of new games, new games that may or may not be true, then we're lost as, then we're as, lost as that mountaineer. Why do you think leaks appear to be as important to our kind of people? Why do we need to know that there are games coming out? After all, there are plenty of games coming out every week. Not all of them are big budgeted blockbusters, but small, simple gameplay published games. And there is no guarantee those leaks will those leaked games will come out. Just see what happened to Grub. We literally had this and it discussion is, it earlier. It is funny because Grub's thing was that the game is not coming out. And the story yeah. is the game is not coming out. So nothing really happened the end. in that way with him. No, but I think it was framed as it was never in existence and it was never going to happen. No. That's the way it's being framed. They use their technically correct to say that this report is inaccurate in a way when it was more, mm. I was told it's not coming. I didn't specifically say exactly everything about it because I didn't want to burn sources. That's how he, he said it. And it's just, it's this thing where people like gotchas and they like, there are people who hate leak culture and they hate the everything around it and whenever they can go when after... When it suits them. Yes. That when too. it suits them. They hate it when it suits them. But yeah, like, it's just... It's it's a very toxic industry. It's just toxic. And I think people are always is. looking to shit on each other. I also think I that the overall it. secrecy that surrounds video games because so much money is being spent... The marketing cycle has to be protected because they have to get you to buy Money's it. It's being spent on movies. It doesn't yeah. stop Marvel going, here's our next 10 years. It's different. And if something changes, it changes. I, I, like, why can't it be that way? Like, have a look. Marvel said, here's the next decade of our I, shit. I, I, we've had this conversation and everyone's like, times. I don't disagree. Awesome. And then something changed. Majors got in trouble. So a few things had to change. And everyone's like, sweet. Why can't it just be that way? Why can't it People, just be that simple? I don't them, when it. you're shooting a movie, most of the time you have human beings to just show and you can just show human beings. When you're making a video game, it looks terrible until a little bit before launch unless you spend way too much time chopping up a vertical slice to show off and people are just not used to how things actually look while they're being made. 
that's been one of the things I've, I've gotten to see a couple of preview events where games just they look really bad but the people tell you yeah no we know about this all this is all changing and then the game comes out and i get the review copy and yep it all changed it all looks way better sometimes not perfectly yeah. it's just it's people are not conditioned to be able to handle it and it's too much work and effort yeah. and it's too disparate of a group to fix it i think and that's why it's just it has not and will not change really like like i always say the problem is us gamers can't just be adults about shit like if i if i like before i started this stuff myself when i used to see a leak i used to be like if it's something i'm interested in hope it's true if it's something i'm not interested in whatever and if it comes true awesome if it doesn't i'll just move on with my life like I, I don't understand the irrational rage and hatred that it garners. I just I don't understand it. It's bizarre to me. It's so weird. It, it's just it's an industry covered by people who really <sighs> like to um, get easy engagement through anger and rage and and all that type of stuff. And their fans follow suit, and it's like a self serving thing. You get more attention if you go negative and attack people. And those people then follow your lead and they do it themselves. And it's this constant revolving shitstorm that just sucks to be a part I of. I could understand, though. I could understand if you were being charged for that information. I, I totally get being angry. So if you paid for that information and the information was this thing is happening and then it didn't happen, you'd be like, well, I paid for it. I could understand. But this is like... You, me me leaking that a Fortnite character is coming has no bearing on your life. You haven't paid for that information. You haven't been hurt by the information. You haven't been whatever. If it doesn't happen, I okay, so it didn't happen. Like I'm not, I, I, just, I don't know. I never understood that weird irrational anger and hatred that people build up over this stuff. I never got it. For years, I used to see leakers. Like, we'd see... How many times did we used to see leaks on NeoGAF? If it happened, great. If it didn't, okay. I'll move on with my life. It's just bizarre. It's so odd. The way people act over this stuff. Well, it, it's so odd. So much of it ends up becoming a... It's always A versus B in the end. And then there's the people who... They might not like this leaker. They might not like what they've leaked. And they're... They want to go against it, and they want to be part of the, the the right smart group, and everything becomes that right now. Like it, there's no, and and we saw it with all the sweet baby stuff. There's no nuance. You can't. It's it's all in, all out for a lot of people, and then anyone who's kind of like, yeah, this thing's kind of dumb, but this person, this thing's very stupid, but also this person was kind of dumb. It's like if you you go there, then people lose their shit. And that just ends up coming to everything. Every discussion has people who are very loud and they're generally the minority, but they're really loud and they are very stringent on evangelizing their point and attacking anyone who doesn't fully agree with it at all times. And so just discourse but sucks. Ma Magnum, I'd love for you to explain why you don't think it's odd that people get irrationally upset over this stuff. I'd, I'd, like, I'd love to hear you explain why it's not odd. Why you think it's cool and it's perfectly normal for people to completely fucking flip their shit at someone that, like, leaked something and then oh, something changed and it didn't end up happening. I'd love to hear why... Hold on, it's the smug attitude. What smug attitude? There's a different... Jeff Grubb there's didn't very have a smug attitude about culture. anything to do with like, Dead Space 2. Jeff Grubb is a actual reporter who does journalistic work and has sources and sources stuff him and tom warren and tom henderson and jason schreier and the like are different than most of the people you might follow in like our level of sphere who are people in their living rooms who talk into microphones they you know bought and aren't a part of a big company doing it for a living they just might know a couple people who work in the industry and they tell them stuff like it's a very different there's very different levels to all of it and, and people want to like compare randos like us who try to sound like we know stuff but admit we don't then there are other people who definitely don't know stuff but want to 
try and have some sort of career. So they'll definitely go all in on thinking they know the answers and they have one person that tells them something. And so they throw it out there as a, a leak and it's pure bullshit. And then people will conflate them with actual reporters like Grubb and Tom Warren, who people will call a, a fanboy. And I'm like, you know what Microsoft actually thinks of Tom Warren's like, they don't want him to know shit because his job is to hold, to get information out that they don't want, that he thinks is relevant to the public interests. Like, press versus influencer versus creator like it's a very different line for actual press members and i think that gets blurred a lot because we have more access to them now so it's all a mess and that smugness you're referring to if it's what i think it is a lot of it's probably born from people wanting to take out their frustration on being shit on by the weirdos that get irrationally upset and attack Especially me. Like, that's... And, and again, from a personal perspective, I don't like seeing shit said about me that's just flat out lies or made up. And some people are going, ho oh, oh, ho, ironic. I, I, I don't like it. Like, I call me out on the stuff that's there on face value, but don't just say, oh, good guess, or you predicted when I've literally publicly shown how I get my info. That's just dumb. Anyway. Anyway. What are we talking about now? It's the last, last question. question. Last question. Yeah. Sorry. Executive producer, okay. Assassin Entertainment. Good evening, John, Jesse, and Nick. I've watched the first three episodes of the Fallout TV show, and it's actually very good. I think it's honestly safe to say we are beginning the golden era of faithful and successful video game adaptations. Sans Halo. The Sonic the Hedgehog films, the Super Mario Brothers movie, Five Nights at Freddy's film, The Last of Us show, and now Fallout. <laughs> See how he left out Halo. Um, have all successfully adapted the media they're based on and have gotten a lot of eyes on the games industry, both production companies and consumers. My question to you guys is, if you had to pick the next video game adaptation that is not currently a reality, which one would you pick? Or is there one that is announced that, uh, is there one that is announced, which one would you like to see? Give me Devil May Cry and Gears of War already Netflix. I'd personally like a Dead Space animated series or a Final Fantasy show, Final Fantasy show where each entry has its own season to stay fresh. What do you guys want? Thanks for all the hard work you guys have done. Appreciate y'all very much. Mass Effect. Um, Mass Effect. Yeah, there'd be so much money. The trilogy as an amazing TV series. Oh. I don't know that, that, could, that you could afford to do that TV. The, the further you get from current reality, the more expensive everything gets. And Mass Effect yeah. is, is so futuristic space opera that it's going to cost a ton. Yeah, but it's, it's spaceships, the Citadel could be a set. You know, and then you've got various planets. That's, Star Trek's been doing that and for years. And it's a ton of aliens, years. and that's either a ridiculous amount of makeup work or a very expensive CG. Like, well, yeah, the Star aliens, Trek was mostly, mostly Ameri- humanoid. Was most, yeah, but it, they don't look like humans most of the time. How many Batarians yeah. and Turians and stuff are you going to have? How many Quarians? Yeah, we can, we can, we can find a I'm way. I'm not saying you Come can't on. do it. I'm just saying it's going to cost a ton of money. It'll happen. I'm actually shocked that Fortnite doesn't have an animated show. A CG animated show. I'm staggered at that. And they already have Unreal Engine 5 to make the show in. And Fortnite is just random shit. It can be anything. If it was a weekly cartoon, it could be just literally anything. I'm, I'm staggered at that. You know, I just that, got to, an, that to me feels like a missed opportunity. I just got a notification from the Game Pass app that uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is available. Forgot to mention. Not the Definitive Edition. They said the Definitive Edition in the post- for the and uh, drop, and it's not. It's just a regular one. Oh. Misleading. Sad face. What else would make a good show? Hmm. That's it. That's well, all there is. They're doing Dredge, which is weird. It's cool. I mean, it's going to be on really? a, boat, a boat horror movie with, yeah. Uh, so much of the time, it really does come down just to you also need who's going to do it. Because a lot of things make sense, but like Westworld only, yes. uh, uh, freaking Fallen only happened because the Westworld team and then some really talented showrunners, like all got together. And like, hey, we love this franchise and we want to make a show. and We got a good idea. Oh for wait, it. that's right. It's the Westworld team, isn't it? Which means each season's going to get progressively worse. They're not the showrunners; they're the executive producers. 
but the showrunners <laughs> are the showrunner was the lady uh one of the ladies who wrote um the marvels which is actually a pretty good movie i didn't mind it yeah um but good. yeah so jonathan nolan lisa joy i think were producers <clears throat> executive producers on westworld they or they're on fallout they were not the showrunners this time but also westworld I hope final, Gears of war is good westworld's final season was uh its second best one makes me sad the third one was a real weak one I hope Gears of War is good. Mm. They have yeah. to get that right. After the mess that's Halo, I hope they get Gears <laughs> of War right. Like, just keep it simple, man. After the unbelievably keep successful and well-reviewed mess that was Halo Season 2. Just keep Gears of War simple. And you've got Batista, who's a very big movie star, wanting to be Marcus Phoenix. It will depend. Don't, don't be happen. silly. Just get him. It will depend... Um when are they starting because he's obviously he's too old for young marcus phoenix so are they going to start with a very older marcus phoenix like batista's but marcus not young. look but marcus look grizzled and old it's even in like gears one game. yeah but the games are hyper realistic in the way the characters look they're not gonna like no batista's fine he can do it just he's not fine. a 20 year old okay. freaking marcus phoenix or something and you get john cena as bad oh man that could be so good. John Cena would be a great bed. Who else would you get? Who would Dom be? Who could Dom be? You reckon? Dom Rock? would be asleep somewhere in a bed. With Maria. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he'd be. Let me go. Ryan Reynolds is bad. Now the issue, so much uh, of the issue right here is if you're keeping the, they're just gigantic muscle freaks, it really limits who you can have. So I think they'd have to get away from that thought. But Cena's a pretty good actor. I don't mind Cena as an actor, yeah, as far as wrestlers all, go. They are all older. So. That's all right. The Rock is Coltrane. No. Why wouldn't you just get Terry Crews? Why wouldn't you just get Terry Crews as the Coltrane? Yeah, and he's older. And then you have the Rock as Dom. Man, what a cast. That'd be cool. I think that'd be great. The budget would be out of control. <laughs> if that's who you're casting, the and budget if you have the Rock in it, you can't control. lose a fight. That's like a part of his thing normally. He doesn't lose. Oh, okay. Maybe. But yeah, they're also they're all way okay. too old. Every single one of them. Nah. Unless you're doing an really old it. established movie or something. But like if you're starting, no, because also you want to do more and they're already kind of old and so. Oh, okay. Hmm. Ignore the super chat. Okay. You ready? Fair there enough. was one. There is one. Oh, yeah. Risk it for the biscuit. Hmm. Yeah, risk it. It's, yeah, it's not simple from what I've been told. You didn't from, ignore from, it? Yeah, from what I've been told. Um. So what else can we talk about? Yeah. How much longer Nothing. can we go? <laughs> Nothing else. It's the end. I'm dead. Who else? I am literally Who dead. I'm, I'm, Who else? I'm, what about Chris die. Pratt as Marcus Phoenix? Yeah, and Tom he Holland. Tom Holland as uh, bed. <laughs> Nick's having some audio he issues. Would, he would work about as well as he were, he did for Nathan Drake. I mean, I can just mute you both. Yeah. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah, it's, it's, who would it's play the end the queen, of the show, Brit? and I'm going to talk over Nick continuously. Jennifer Connolly. Because I'm going to die. Connelly. I might actually die of, of, of lack <laughs> Sim, of sleep. Yeah. So I just want to thank all of our wonderful patrons for being here and being wonderful. <laughs> Kevin um, Hart is a ticker. <laughs> 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 That'd be a good, good one. Will, Will Ferrell as Lamb as Lambert as a locust. Will Ferrell. Oh dear. That'd be great. Oh. And he's just yelling, Why am I glowing? Why am I glowing? Right. Chat. I feel like I'm taking crazy pals. Karen Gillan <laughs> as Anya and then Jack Black as the Colonel guy. And you just get the whole Jumanji cast in. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in. 
Okay. Yeah. Deal. See you next time. All right. <laughs> Jim Carrey is Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. Have a wonderful <laughs> evening um, and a weekend. Play some good video games. Keep an eye out on the website next week for lots of stuff coming, including Harold mm. Halibut, the review, um, and other reviews and more. some stuff other reviews yep. yeah all yep. sorts of things you it's know, not you know it's not slowing down until may we've we've got more this month a lot yeah it's crazy how busy everything is um love you all have fun yep. ciao for now ciao for now ciao for now <laughs>